uh, three quarters of the time we dedicated to the discussion was uh, uh, on uh, the process uh, itself. Uh, there was a very lively discussion in regard to whether MAG should take upon itself uh, without any further consultation the task of determining the, the theme and sub-themes or whether there should be a wider consultation to the wider community. And there were very interesting points in, in favor and against. Uh, I would uh, uh, highlight maybe some comments that there was a proposal that maybe that should be uh, proposed to the next IGF from, from the start as something that we would look to receive from the community, those inputs for themes and sub-themes, and uh, not now. There was a concern in regard to the lack of established uh, the criteria for this to happen and the concern in regard to the timing we will have to receive and process this in a way that is uh, taking into account the, the, the comments we will we, receive. Uh, another comment was in regard that maybe no new I idea would come up from those uh, consultations that actually all the material we have for making a decision is already available and as uh, Mark has just indicated that uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that uh, I think Virat indicated that uh, f f we have already a kind of consultation that took place that in a way has increased. On the other hand, there was, uh, I think, very important points as well that that could be seen as something innovative we could do uh, that would reflect the uh, extended time frame we'll have this year, uh, in, probably in regard to other years in which uh, since we benefited from the fact uh, IGF this year happened in September, so we had more time to, to have this meeting in December, so that would be an opportunity. You know, we have some more time for this. Uh, and that actually we do not need to normalize all the, the answers we received that uh, MAG would be in a position to process this uh, as it come. And also there was a, a comment that we could do it maybe on a test basis, and, and uh, allowing community to comment and crowdsource around one sub-team, for example, not the, the, the full team and sub-team, but to restrict it to an area as a kind of test case for future years. So, uh, but there was no, I have to say, there was no conclusive uh, uh, decision in that regard. And the remaining of the time, uh, we have roughly 12, 30 minutes to discuss the substance itself. And uh, in, in that regard, I think some points were made in regard to uh, proposals that had been pro put forward before. Uh, uh, and actually, even a new theme was <laughs> proposed. So that indicates the complexity that will be uh, found to, to find a solution around this. The new proposal is 10 years shaping the evolution and use of the internet. And then some points were made in regard to a concern that the notion of sustainable development that is embraced by many participants may be may too broad, does not may exactly lead us to discuss uh, specific problems, specific issues we want to discuss. On the other hand, there was also in, in, uh, against that vision that uh, even being broad, we could deal with that in, in regard to the sub-themes so uh, I think we, we had some very useful discussion. I think uh, most participants, I myself benefited very much. I, I, I assume all who participated also were enriched by the discussions, but I, this does not for sure preempt uh, the need for uh, another phase uh, to be decided upon and proposed by you, uh, Yanis, on how to, to move forward in that. Uh, just finalize that even those who don't think that now is the right time to launch this uh, crowdsourcing exercise, they are fully in favor of, in, in principle, of, of having the more open uh, kind of consultation and we have, the, but there is this concern about the timing, about the lack of criteria, about how this will be processed. And uh, that's, I think this uh, very imperfectly, of course, I think this is my attempt to, to, to sum up the points that were made. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, I understand um, 
Uh, Constance wanted to say two sentences. Thank you so much. Um, there has been another proposal floating, and just to uh, feed the, the, the reflection, uh, and this is not my idea, um, Internet Governance for Empowerment, Trust, and Prosperity um, for those who feel that sustainable development is maybe too vague. Thank you so much. So thank, thank you, Constance, uh, for that proposal. Um, what I would like to suggest, it's, it's obvious that we cannot reach uh, consensus here. Uh, I would like maybe to ask uh, uh, Benedicta to take up the task and continue uh, consulting uh, community online, MAG and community. I would, I would uh, urge open up this discussion to broader community, as was uh, suggested by Avery and supported by others. Maybe not, not for overly long, uh, because uh, the, the definition of teams and sub-teams uh, uh, will m or may delay the call for proposals, um, and we would need to get this job done roughly by mid-January, latest in January. Uh, I would, I would suggest that we schedule a conference call around mid-January and, and uh, put that as the only item on the agenda and, and then try to finalize uh, the, and, and then reach rough consensus on that. I don't think that everybody will be uh, equally happy. I would rather think we need to strive to make everybody equally unhappy. And, um, and then from then we will then uh, go forward uh, with the call for proposals. If that is agreeable, then we can uh, proceed that way. Avri, you are against that? Yeah, I, that, this Avri, I just want to add one thing, and that I'm willing to, you know, understanding the resource limitations of the Secretariat, and having spent a fair amount of time working with the Secretariat, I'm more than willing to help them do this over the intervening time. So thank, thank you very much, uh, Avri, for, for volunteering. Uh, Benedicto, you have a good collaborator <laughs> in, uh, for, for this task. So let us move uh, to the next uh, item, and that is um, a discussion about um, uh, other activities surrounding the, uh, or which are part of the IGF, and um, uh, maybe also other type of sessions that we have. And, and of course, we have already touched upon best practice forums, and I do not think we should uh, go much on, on, on that topic, but uh, topics as um, uh, dynamic coalitions and uh, interaction of dynamic coalitions with IGF and the role of dynamic coalitions and how dynamic coalitions could be leveraged in order to promote uh, the uh, aims of IGF or how I, uh, dynamic coalitions could be used uh, to engage them in intersessional activities and what are relationships between dynamic coalitions and IGF in, in, in general. So I, I, I think this, this is the, uh, the concern of, of some MAG members who put that or asked to put that on the agenda. Um, and I think that that also will help us to, to shape our un better understanding how the, about the modalities of intercessional work uh, might, might be organized. And I recognize uh, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. My name is Marilyn Cade. My, uh, I raised some concerns yesterday, but my concerns are extend to not just the dynamic coalitions, but an expression as well of um, awareness that I ask that we have about the um, uh, expectations that we may wish to bring to national and regional um, initiatives as well in terms of their ability and even in terms of resourcing to take on additional work that does not come from their organic um, process. I support the idea of inviting uh, participation. Some 
will not be convening in time perhaps to contribute, others will. But let me go back to dynamic coalitions. Um, the dynamic coalitions are not all uh, at the same level of um, maturity. Not all of the dynamic coalitions actually are um, yet, I would say, geographically representative or uh, necessarily reflecting all points of view. And in fact, some have been uh, successful in a particular area because they are um, more aligned around the work that they are doing. This is not a criticism of the dynamic coalitions, it's an observation. So the people who come to work in the dynamic coalition about accessibility, for instance, tend to be uh, committed to and aware of that issue already. They're not there to debate whether it's a good thing to do. I noticed that Peter, I uh, take note that Peter Major is here and may be able to, um, to comment further. So I would like to understand what it is we think dynamic coalitions are expected to do and uh, whether we think that there needs to be different criteria for the dynamic coalitions or we are prepared to accept that some may, may be more um, basic in their evolution, some may be more of a birds of feather, um, like-minded um, uh, work program, others may be um, very different and be more of a preliminary, we're just beginning to debate and, and figure out an issue. But I don't understand our uh, expectations and I'd like to understand those more. Uh, so thank you. Uh, if you would allow me very briefly, since uh, uh, the dynamic coalitions were created at the very beginning and actually uh, the history or, or the, the story behind crea uh, creation of dynamic coalitions was that IGF has never been uh, made uh, to uh, make any decisions. And it was understood that uh, some people, some organizations, uh, could get together uh, around one theme and take that theme uh, to greater maturity and propose it for uh, 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 decision-making somewhere where that belongs to. And uh, in 2006, we had created, uh, during IGF, there were a number of uh, dynamic coalitions created. and. Uh, but then they went somehow loose and then there was a, a decrease in activity and now there is again a little bit up, uh, uh, sort of increase in, in activity of dynamic coalition. Some of them uh, have uh, gone uh, as far as proposing uh, some mm, uh, recommendations to international organizations and they have been acted upon. Uh, but there haven't been any kind of uh, strong feedback, to, to my understanding, from in dynamic coalitions to the to the IGF, and that that is why uh, the question is uh, on the table: how we deal with them. We have created them, or the, at the very beginning, but do we need to establish kind of um, uh, rules of of engagement with them? That that is the question, Marcus. Yes, thank you, and thank you, Chair, for recalling the history. Uh, and I would like to pick up also on what Mark had been saying, and Marilyn, indeed, the dynamic coalitions we have are very heterogeneous. And you were right in pointing out it was a kind of compromise to begin with. Some wanted sort of regular sub-working groups, and that was rejected at the beginning as it was seen as being too institutionalized and the compromise was let these dynamic coalitions get uh, off the ground and get started. Now most of them didn't do much except organize an annual meeting but some others actually did some work and the dynamic coalition on accessibility is a very good example of very useful work being done by a dynamic coalition which is not so much in debating a theme, but more as raising awareness and putting documents together on how we can helpful to people with disabilities. And I came across, uh, when you asked me to chair, uh, to prepare, uh, lead the session on network neutrality, that there is dynamic coalition on network neutrality. And 
that dynamic coalition has been extremely dynamic in developing uh, principles, but this is an issue which is extremely controversial, and they did that in a kind of vacuum among like-minded, did very good work, and took that work to uh, the Council of Europe, and I think also to Europe European Parliament, but they never took it back to uh, the main uh, body of the community or never had it, uh, there was a lack of a feedback uh, to the broader IGF community. And this is, uh, I think, very relevant, and we touched on this on one of the calls we had uh, after or before uh, Istanbul, and I think there is a need to create a feedback loop between the dynamic coalitions uh, and the broader community. And when preparing the net uh, neutrality session, we actually looked at the example of the Internet Engineering Task Force, where anybody can start a bird of a feather. When this gets traction, they can then propose creating a working group, which needs to be approved by the Internet Architecture Board. The terms of reference need to be approved, and then the working group can start its work, but again, once they conclude their work, they have to report back to the broader community, and if the community then agrees on their work, then it turns into an official RFC of the Internet Engineering Task Force. And I think as IGF, uh, we can look at the ITF and learn a bit from this kind of mechanism, but if we want to have a tangible outcome of the dynamic coalitions. We need to create a link to the broader community, and I think the MAG would be the logical uh, group that would approve the terms of reference for the dynamic coalitions and would then also give uh, the IGF label over the outcome. There's also the dynamic coalition. I think also Mark mentioned it on rights and principles. They came up with a very elaborate uh, outcome. They have a, a little booklet where these are print, uh, printed out, but they were never actually reported back into the main body uh, of the meeting of the community. So this is something, and I'm sure we will not be able to come to a conclusion here, but. I strongly urge uh, that we have to give uh, sufficient reflection on how we interact with the dynamic coalition and bring them in the main fold of the IGF. Thanks. So thank you, Marcus. Uh, Peter? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Peter Dengate Thrush. Uh, I agree completely with um, everything that Marcus has said, and I wonder if the way to go forward and, and to adopt your suggestion, Mr. Chairman, about making some rules is to begin first, as one should, by collecting some facts and doing some evaluations. Why don't we include in the evaluation mechanism that we've been talking about, the post hoc um, mechanism, begin by doing some evaluations of the dynamic coalitions and then armed with the information that that will produce? Um, because these things don't need to, I don't get any sense we need to do anything in a hurry. We need to do it properly. So why don't we start by collecting some information, doing some evaluations, and then moving forward into the kind of areas that Marcus is talking about, which I agree is where we need to go. So thank you, Virat. It's going to be my shortest comment ever. I lend my voice and wait behind everything that has been said by Marcus. So thank you, Mark. Yes, sir, I'll be equally brief, Mark Ava, UK government. I um, agree very much with uh, Marcus's main points about the need to develop this sort of loop mechanism back into the IGF. And what I had suggested earlier about um, uh, the, each of the dynamic coalitions um, reporting and briefing the MAG on um, their uh, action plans and uh, expected outcomes, um, we would then be in a better place to understand how we can integrate them in the intercessional work and in the IGF in uh, Brazil next year. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, anybody opposing? I see none. Uh, Marilyn, would you uh, agree to take that uh, mapping first uh, in, into the scope of the working group on uh, sort of self-evaluation, that we uh, get a list of uh, those uh, uh, existing 
dynamic coalitions and then as a result of that uh, see uh, which are active which are not and uh, listening this discussion uh, we have a practice uh, in IGF that uh, one uh, slot is given to for coordination of activities of national and regional IGFs these are spin outs from the uh, uh, IGF uh, uh, international maybe we should also add uh, uh, dynamic coalitions uh, to that list and uh, assign a certain number of uh, MAG members to be present in the, that coordination meeting and gather all this information. I, w I would be very hesitant to make MAG as, as, a, as a Senate which calls on, on hearings uh, ones or others. I would rather see MAG members going uh, in the community and gathering that information and I think that that mechanism would be uh, would be more democratic and helpful. Uh, Marilyn, you are in agreement with me, as usually, right? With one tiny, tiny edit, Marilyn Kate speaking. Um, Chair, I, I, I do think that the dynamic coalitions, uh, just like the national and regionals, they do have the opportunity to write a report. And um, so I don't want to overlook um, the sort of self-assessment responsibility and contribution. Um, happy to put it into the working group um, because I think it is an issue of um, what are we doing about developing outcomes or outputs, which may be a term I like better. Um, but I think I just want to recognize that there are um, reports and perhaps the Secretariat might even be able to uh, help me with a comment on that. So thank you. That, that, is, that is decided. And uh, are there any other questions under this agenda item that people would like to raise? I see none. We can then uh, move forward. Uh, the, um, I understand that we already had a conversation about the uh, preparatory calendar uh, meetings and milestones. I, I think that majority uh, uh, thought that uh, w what uh, I did send out uh, would be something to follow and was uh, uh, not except very few keen to do uh, three meetings in 2015 uh, and therefore I would uh, uh, suggest that we uh, uh, go for three uh, meeting strategy with understanding that every every second week we would have a a teleconference where we would addressing uh, topics that uh, need to be decided. I think we will start with uh, themes and sub-themes uh, as, as a, a question uh, which has the highest priority for the moment. And then of course we, uh, w when it comes to um, uh, second meeting of, of the cycle in May, we really need to see this is just an indication that we may have uh, one at that time. We do not know exact dates. We do not know exact place. Uh, usually the May meeting is uh, sort of aligned with the WSIS forum. And the dates that I have put uh, in the proposal, they, these are uh, d dates uh, either three days before the meeting, meaning Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, before the week of VISIS Forum, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, week after the VISIS Forum, because VISIS Forum is taking place five days, and this will be celebration of 150th anniversary of ITU uh, around uh, World Information Day. Uh, we need to see availability of rooms. We need to see availability of um, uh, hotels. It may happen that we need to look at a venue. Uh, occasionally there is a Eurodig meeting happening in early June in Sofia. So that might be an option, not that we are going, but that might be an option. Uh, but again, remains to be seen. Secretariat will communicate as soon as possible uh, th these dates. But in between, of course, we need to give uh, to, to send call for proposals end of uh, January, collecting uh, all inputs 
submissions by end of uh, or March, mid March, end March, do evaluation, pre selection evaluation uh, before the meeting, and then uh, aim at uh, uh, sort of selecting majority of workshops or events during, during that meeting. I see Marilyn and Cheryl asking for the floor. Marilyn, please. Thank you, Marilyn Cade speaking. Uh, Chair, I just want to, uh, for all colleagues, to note that the Commission on Sci the United Nations Commission on Science and Technology for Development meets uh, on May from May 4th through 8th. And um, I understand that sometimes we have met on the cusp of the WISIS Forum, but sometimes we've also met on the cusp of the CSTD. I mention this because um, many of the uh, countries that are members of CSTD are also actively engaged in the, um, in the Internet Governance Forum. And um, the WISIS Plus 10 review um, report that CSTD is um, mandated to deliver and debate in May is uh, quite significantly important to the IGF. So I just mentioned those dates and that event uh, for consideration as well. Um, the CSTD um, typically, as it meets, it has an opening um, high-level session. It has two major work tracks, one being science and technology for development, and the other being with us follow-up, a responsibility which was given to the CSTD by the UNGA in 2006. So I would like us to also take that meeting into account. So thank you. But you're not suggesting during the week of the uh, CSTD. It should be either before, not before, that cannot be, it's too early uh, af after that. I, I, it could be after it. I just note that actually for my own purposes, although I do partic participate in WISIS forum, I think there are more um, opportunities perhaps at, um, uh, to participate in the day where that uh, debate will take place. So thank you. Uh, Cheryl? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just had a quick question. I wanted to see if we had concluded our discussion on main sessions um, and the, inter the substance of the intersessional. I know that we had put a proposal on the table, and I wasn't sure if it's appropriate to address it before we close or, or not. But I just wanted to ask that. Thank you. Uh, we uh, have concluded uh, discussions on uh, main sessions, yes, but we have not concluded yet discussion on intersessional activities. So that is still still coming. Um, so thank thank you, Marilyn, for that. Peter. Peter, Ma Peter Major. Just to follow up on what uh, Marilyn said. Uh, and what you have mentioned. Uh, the CSCD in this year, in its resolution about the WISIS follow-up, will naturally take some, uh, will, will, will have a paragraph about the continuation of the RGF. And in view of that, even though you said it's too early, probably we should reconsider whether we shouldn't have a, some kind of impact uh, or to outreach towards the members of the CSTD and the bigger community here in Geneva. By bigger community, I mean the diplomatic community. So uh, I just put it on the table to think about it. No, I think when, when uh, we discussed the self-evaluation, uh, my understanding was that uh, we would uh, submit the results of self-evaluation, the report, uh, to the CSTD as, as an input to their discussion. The outreach, I, th I think uh, Geneva is the place where we can do outreach easily because Secretariat is based here, and I see no difficulty in doing that. And actually, this is the next point on our agenda, uh, how to do communication and outreach. Um, that's point number seven, that I wanted to uh, open floor 
uh, for uh, comments, inputs. I, I heard Jivan talking, uh, volunteering to put pen on the paper based on his experience uh, and knowledge, but I don't see him in the room. Maybe he's, he's, he, will, he will join us hopefully soon. Uh, I have two requests for the floor, uh, Virat and Marilyn. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to volunteer for the outreach um, group. Um, preferably the evaluation group should also be the outreach group. Um, that would be a perfect way to start developing what we have learned into the outreach. So I just wanted to volunteer for that. So thank you. Uh, Marilyn? Thank you. My name is Marilyn Cade. My suggestion would be um, it would be good, I think, to integrate the uh, evaluation. I'm not – perhaps I'll call it assessment and documentation <laughs> um, as opposed to evaluation um, because I think what we are trying to do is to document the achievements um, as opposed to so much uh, rate them. Um, and I do think it would be good to integrate that into – uh, an outreach um, initiative, and I hope that um, I suggested to the Secretariat, I think yesterday there was suggestion that we have a, a mailing list, but perhaps we could also, those who are interested who are in the room could gather in the back of the room, we could put together a mailing list um, and come up with a, a rough idea. In order to deliver something useful by May, I just will note and I will turn to the Vice Chair for um, uh, one of the regions, Mr. Peter Major, um, Vice Chair from CSTD. I believe that means we really need to have a document um, to circulate within the MAG uh, by the end of March. In, indeed. Uh, that, that is, that is um, uh, I, I think the stat statutory requirement is to send documents one month before the session, but that is uh, by Secretariat. I assume the Secretariat needs to get it uh, beforehand that they can process and, and put, put uh, uh, or communicate that to members of CSTD. Uh, so at the end of the day, we do not have much time. But also, uh, I, I think that uh, the uh, communication and outreach uh, practice is uh, slightly broader than just this. Uh, we need to communicate uh, the results of our self-assessment to inform the debate. But in reality, we need we need to find a way how to uh, how to uh, beat or, or uh, oppose perception that basically IGF does nothing. Uh, in reality, IGF does a lot of things. We have produced a wealth of material, both uh, video material, documentary uh, material. Uh, every session that has been held in uh, in IGF technically is recorded and uh, is available. The point is that not many people know about it, not many people uh, use it, and we need to find a way how to push that information out to relevant organizations, to relevant countries, to relevant individuals who may benefit from that uh, information, and that, that is the tricky part. We also need to take into account that uh, there always will be uh, calls for for um, doing more, and they will be motivated by political considerations rather than by, by realities. So we will always uh, be confronted with um, sort of opposition in, of, of some of some uh, kind. So therefore, we need really to uh, to think how we overcome those uh, uh, shortfalls and how we proactively uh, present IGF outside, and of course the uh, community input would be very useful. Uh, here uh, I have now a number, number of speakers. Uh, maybe we could devote the uh, next 15-20 uh, minutes to this conversation. And I would uh, like to see uh, also uh, volunteers who would like to sort of uh, uh, be coordinators of this uh, work. Uh, and uh, help us out. So ICC basis first and then uh, uh, Maria Victoria. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
I would just like to offer the um, support and uh, contribution of ICC basis to the communication and outreach work of the MAG and uh, as a, as a non-MAG member I'd like to contribute to that. So thank you. Maria Victoria. Thank you Chair. Um, we come to the to the point where I can actually volunteer to participate in the outreaching uh, group of communication and, and outreach and as I have been mentioning uh, it's extremely important the participation of uh, developing countries and it's quite worrisome that in New York the voices of many of many like-minded uh, uh, countries are not here because of uh, lack of clarity or, or understanding. We think uh, that uh, we can be of use here in Geneva among the diplomatic community and to the highest level, bringing some ambassadors into, into discussions and to have them with a better on understanding and transmit these messages to our capitals and from there to, to New York where, where the decisions are, are made and uh, well, that's all. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Leah? <coughs> uh, thank you, Chair. Just to add my voice of support for this, for the integration of these two, uh, two elements, as uh, Vira, you and uh, Virat suggested. Also, like to volunteer um, to participate in this work. Um, and uh, in, in practical terms, what I think would be useful in, in thinking about outreach and communications is in the in the early stages think about um, um, an action plan with relevant points where we could actually then input whether it's conferences um, or events where MAG members can then um, feed these uh, findings um, yeah that's all thank you so thank thank you um, uh, Peter the first Pete, Peter Dinge and Trash then Peter Major <laughs> thank you mr. chairman uh, can I just Good governance principles require that I insist that you separate these two functions along the lines that you've started to suggest. We mustn't confuse the function of collecting, evaluating, comparing and compiling information with one of the uses to which that information is put, which, as you pointed out, is a major task, the communication about the IGF. So a communications exercise is a, is a separate working group with separate skills, separate people, separate targets from the evaluation and collecting of the information. The information, once it's collected, is useful for, for example, for designing programs, for recruiting, for all sorts of purposes. The, the information that's taken from that source is then selectively prepared for the communications messaging that's required. So we really do need to separate these functions and these tasks and, and, and these working groups. Thanks. Yeah, no, they are, they are separate. Uh, the one uh, doing self-assessment mapping, and that, that will be led by, by Marilyn, and then we're now talking about communication strategies and, and, and outreach strategies. Um, uh, Peter, Peter Major, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I fully agree that we are talking about two different things and uh, we should keep that in mind. And the first thing about the assessment and the uh, usual UN uh, way of doing things is probably uh, by the end of the assessment it will be transformed into some kind of report from the Secretariat which will be sent to the CSC, the Secretariat, to be made available to the CSC, the members, during the May meeting. As for the outreach, uh, we, sh we may uh, do it in a very complex way. Probably we won't have the time and the resources to do that. So what I can th think of is uh, some new task for the Secretariat to organize some kind of meetings with the uh, local diplomats here in, in Geneva to give uh, some idea what, what we are doing and what are the achievements. And I'm ready to contribute to that as well. So thank you very much. Uh, I have, I have uh, further Marilyn, Murad, and Dominique on my list. Marilyn, please. Thank you. My comment is going to be very quick. I do think the working group that I um, and I think Leah volunteered for before and others will be uh, working on will be a major um, source of information. Um, I just want to uh, note that really if in paragraph 72, um, this is something that needs to be this, this uh, outreach and communication needs to become a, a more core part of our ongoing activities. Um, and I would like to volunteer to work in the in that group as well, uh, because I think that packaging up our story 
is one of the, and becoming ambassadors ourselves in an informed way, is one of our um, major objectives for MAG members. Uh, but that means we also have to have materials that MAG members can use. And I uh, understand the difference in skills. So thank you. Murat? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to recall my uh, proposal of yesterday to, uh, to convene uh, a meeting, an information session by the IGF Security Secur with uh, the permanent mission here in Geneva in order to introduce um, the forum itself and uh, talk about its achievements so far. I would like also to, uh, to suggest that um, we, uh, we, uh, we use broadly the social networks in order to, uh, to marketize the, the next event. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, thank you for this proposal. And actually, uh, I have seven years' experience here in Geneva. And I can tell you that for Secretariat, it's not so easy to uh, organize that type of outreach session. But it is very easy to do it by a delegation. So therefore, uh, maybe I would invite our next hosts or our previous hosts or uh, hosts of all uh, previous IGFs to get together and to organize one information session uh, to uh, Geneva crowd at the time which is most opportune because some, sometimes people are very busy running from one meeting to another, but there are some quiet times. And to my knowledge, at the uh, beginning of January, always is very quiet. People are keen to work, but there is noth nothing happening. So that's the best, best time of doing things. Usually it's happening during the lunchtime, two hours lunchtime. Delegates are bribed by sandwiches. They, they come, they get their sandwich, they, they go in a room, and then they have an interaction for about uh, one hour and 30 minutes. So, so I, 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 see, I see Benedicto is already committing himself to do that. <laughs> now I have uh, pre-committed to this when <laughs> decided to, to propose Brazil for next IGF. But uh, well, I, I'd like to thank uh, colleagues um, especially from the delegations here who have indicated their willingness to, uh, in that regard, uh, we think it's very important that uh, this outreach be made towards governments, which is recognized as one of these, maybe the, 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 the stakeholder that is less involved in IGF meetings, and especially because there will be this high-level meeting by the end of next year, it's very important that the delegations will be involved in Geneva and uh, maybe more importantly in New York. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we have already been giving some thought to this. Uh, we want, uh, we'll be working with our mission to identify appropriate moments. Uh, we, it would be very good if we could do this in partnership with previous host countries the future host country, Mexico as well, and other interested parties. Uh, we think uh, in New York, taking into account the characteristic of negotiations, maybe we should aim at have different uh, kinds of uh, briefings. Uh, for example, one address to G77, I think it would be up for, for us, G77 members. Because in New York, the, this negotiation occurs between groupings, uh, G77, and uh, so it's important. And then to have a larger uh, reaching out to the wider membership. We are, have given thought to that, and on the basis of the discussions we have had in the course of this meeting, this has uh, uh, reinforced our perception of that need. And also in some, uh, maybe in also in a different setting, you can work together also with the uh, with you, Jan is with uh, uh, UNDESA to organize some, also some outreach. But I, I think we'll have to think of, of maybe some building blocks to, to make sure we reach out to the negotiators who will be dealing with this, who need to, uh, as Mexico has said, to be better informed and to, to have a sense coming from governments primarily, uh, but also from other stakeholders as well. That, that would be, I think, helpful for, for the purpose we want to achieve. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Mdikta, for committing. Please, Hartmut. 
a very brief information. I received a message from Max Senges for Google, who now is collecting all materials of the last IGFs. And I uh, sent him all material, all MP3, all videos, all transcripts from Brazil 2007. So if we do it, all past organizers, we will have an archive. So I, I do it, and he is organizing this. He is well known in the community. He is supporting us, and he has the, the let's say, the, the time or the, the wish to organize these historical documents. Very good. Thank you. So. Um, I understand we're getting very excited. Sil Sylvia is next on my list. I have a number of people. I would like to volunteer to, uh, in, with the outreach activities. I can uh, also help with different groups and, and, and regions. I'm coordinator or be, um, participate uh, private sector, civil society, governments, etc. So thank you very much, Dominique. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. I, while I think we all will be excellent ambassadors, both offline and online for the IGF, I just want to also volunteer our global reach um, from a GSMA perspective for all that we do. So just throwing that in. Thanks. So um, uh, as I mentioned, we will, we will organize the uh, doodle sort of uh, uh, activity where everybody will be able to join in uh, in volunteering to different work streams that we're organizing now. Maybe if we could uh, uh, stick to the uh, substantive points, I really do not want to uh, prolong this discussion. Uh, I want to go, I want to go to, uh, to next agenda items which are uh, maybe more uh, con contra uh, not controversial but more complex. Uh, Ephraim from online uh, participation stream Ephraim, are you with us? I'm here. Uh, this is Ephraim Kenyanito from Kenya, for the record. Um, I, I, I would just wanted to, to say I also register my interest in outreach and communications, and um, especially translating these conversations to young, new oncomers uh, from developing countries. Thank you. So thank you, Tobela. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to add my voice to the need to actually package information that would allow us to actually do this communication and outreach. Um, and I would also volunteer as far as reaching out to stakeholders um, through the African Union and through the NEPAD agency. But I wanted to also suggest that perhaps there is a need to maybe ask MAG members to actually submit um, events that they are aware of that are happening next year that are strategic and that may actually be useful for us to consider engaging with as Mac. Thank you, Chair. So thank you. Uh, I think we have uh, overwhelming sort of understanding of, of importance of these, these things and uh, I'm looking to Wea now. Thank you, Chair. Just a quick question. Uh, would these working groups be open to the broader community or just to MAG members? This is just not known. Thank you. If you can clarify. No, usu usually we try to identify coordinators from the MAG and then uh, the, the rest of the uh, group is op open to uh, community, specifically to those who used to be MAG members uh, in priority, but of course everybody else as well. Um, uh, from uh, I, I really want, want to clo close down this, this conversation, um, uh, but I haven't decided yet whom from volunteers I, I, should, I should ask to lead, lead the process. Maybe, maybe Dominique, uh, would, would you agree to, to l launch the activity and then we will see who will join you uh, as, as, a, um, as a team. From my side, I have decided to uh, post uh, at least one blog per month in preparations uh, to the, to the uh, IGF explaining where we are in, in process and what are the topics, what are objectives, what we're trying to achieve and where we are in preparation. So that, that is commitment from my side. And uh, with this, I would like to close this part of the conversation and move uh, to, to the uh, few outstanding issues. And I was, I was told that uh, 
IGF Support Association has a brief sort of uh, information to share with the MAG. Am I right? I'm looking to Marcus or, or, or to Raul. This, this would be just an information without, without discussions. Okay. Please, thank, Raul. Thank you very much, Janice. Um, as you already know, the IGF Supporting Association was launched uh, during the last uh, IGF meeting in Istanbul. Uh, here in the room, there are some uh, colleagues that are serving the, in the executive uh, committee. Uh, Avri is here, uh, Cheryl, Virat, uh, Marilyn, myself, and Marcus is the secretary of the IGF uh, Supporting Association. We finalized the incorporation of the organization in Geneva. Um, 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 we appointed the, uh, the Marcus as the secretary of the association. And in the, f the first uh, uh, month, we were working, as uh, you know, the Internet Society supporting the association, providing the secretariat uh, functions for one year, free of cost. So we were working on the, in an agreement on the terms of reference of the work that the Internet Society is providing. We formed two committees, a uh, fundraising committee that is chaired by uh, Sheryl Miller, and the communication and outreach uh, committee that's chaired by Marilyn Kate. And we sent uh, an email to the members of the association inviting everybody to join uh, one of those committees. And now that the committees are formed and they are working, I, I repeat the invitation to everybody. So please, if you are interested in collaborating with the association, showing one of those committees, talk to Cheryl or uh, to Marilyn and uh, be in touch with them. The state of uh, financing of the association so far, counting the money already received in, uh, in the bank account and firm pledges, we have almost uh, $190,000, and it is composed in the, in, in, in the following way. It's uh, $1,100 uh, $1, were the initial contributions received in Istanbul, and we have received contribution from Amazon for uh, $2,500, Wiley Rain, $1,000, Verizon, $10,000, Sira from Canada, $25,000, and uh, $50,000 from ICANN and $100,000 from the Internet Society. Uh, a report will be published next week, and uh, we will include all those uh, figures. And this is just because this is the, the, the first uh, report we will issue to the uh, community, but uh, after that we plan to, to issue those uh, reports uh, quarterly uh, after, so the, in uh, the beginning of January, or some, at some time in January we will uh, issue a new, a new report. Uh, today is, uh, uh, we have opened our own account in, in Geneva. As, uh, so far we were working uh, just uh, with the, uh, under the, uh, an account of the Internet Society, but uh, we opened uh, our own account today. Um, we, so the, now it's, uh, it will take just uh, a few days, uh, we hope, to have the um, uh, PayPal mechanism available for uh, making uh, contributions online. Um, for those who already contributed uh, to the association, um, they will receive uh, the receipts uh, probably in the, within the next uh, 15 days. Uh, some people has, uh, have asked about that, people that uh, paid cash in, uh, in, uh, in Istanbul. So we are now in a position to start to send invoices to the, uh, sorry, the, the, the receipts to the people. And we are ready also to invoice the people that have expressed the intention to, uh, to contribute. Uh, now that we will uh, issue the invoices and with the details uh, for making the, the, the contributions on, online or through uh, wires, depending on the, obviously on the amount of the, of the contributions. Uh, so uh, basically we are ready to receive your contributions. So please um, take your pen, open your checks and uh, uh, take advantage of that we are here, so don't miss this opportunity to make a contribution. Uh, one of the things that we are discussing in the executive committee now is the criteria for applying the money that we are collecting. Uh, it, is, it seems uh, much uh, simpler than uh, what uh, really uh, is, um, because the, there is a consensus on the executive committee to apply 
the money collected to three uh, basic things, to support the IGF Secretariat, to support participation of MAG members in the meetings, uh, to support uh, regional and national IGFs. There is also agreement that majority, the majority of the resources will be used for supporting the Secretariat, but it's not clear yet what exact percentage and if all that money will go through the UN Trust Fund or we will reserve some part of the contribution to the IGF Secretariat for being uh, spent in a ad hoc basis. Uh, the Executive Committee will elaborate uh, uh, the criteria for its uh, next meeting. We are uh, ha holding conference uh, once a month. Um, once uh, we take the decision, surely in the next meeting we will make it uh, public, the criteria, so uh, all the members will have the opportunity also to, to uh, express their opinions. So. And the, the Executive Committee um, are, is uh, also working on other priority, that uh, are the processes, uh, the needed, uh, um, necessary processes for uh, dealing with those uh, um, as, um, uh, things that I mentioned before. Uh, for example, for uh, the supporting participation of MAG members, it is necessary to de design processes for how to, to receive uh, applications and how to take decisions based on what uh, rules. Uh, same things, for example, the periodicity of, uh, with uh, which uh, we will uh, be making contributions to the IGF Secretariat. We uh, talked in our meeting that uh, we held yesterday in, a, in a making probably uh, two uh, contributions per year. But so we need to, to develop all the procedures for that, and I think that uh, all those procedures surely will be ready in the next uh, couple of months. So the, the situation is good. Uh, we are um, almost, uh, I think that we need just a, a few dollars, a few bucks for accomplishing the, the goal that uh, we uh, set for the, the end of 2014. Now the, 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 the goals for 2015 are much more ambitious. And so we need from all of you, and not only from all of you, but also the people, all the connections you have, people that you can bring on board. I think that we all, all of us here in this meeting are really uh, interested in supporting IGF and uh, ensuring the stability of the, of the process and the secretariat. So I, um, I know that uh, you will be contributing with us. I have some things here, but uh, the, I have pens for you. And I have also pins, pins and pens, <laughs> so, and I will, uh, I will be happy to, to uh, uh, give to you now. And there is also a brochure available. I think that uh, Birat uh, brought some copies of the, the, the brochure to be uh, distributed here, and also the brochure will be available in the online, so anybody can uh, download it uh, for, uh, for using it uh, for uh, outreach uh, purposes. I think that that's all. I hope to not uh, uh, forget anything, but uh, I'm running because the pressure of the, the time that I, I know that uh, you have many things to, to cover in the, in the meeting today. So happy to answer any question uh, after the meeting or by email. Please uh, be in touch. Um, that's all. Thank you very much. So thank, thank you very much uh, for, for this uh, <laughs> update and uh, for all your assistance. I would <laughs> we, we do not have uh, too many questions uh, remaining, but they are uh, fairly complex. And um, so let me, let me um, list them. So one, one is uh, modalities of uh, uh, intersessional activities, how we will arrange and how to, to we need to get uh, kind of common understanding, what we mean by that and how we will uh, uh, work on, on that. Uh, get some volunteers who would uh, lead that uh, process. Secondly, we need to discuss what we do with the invitation by um, uh, ICANN, CGI, and World Economic Forum to join the Council of uh, Net Mondial Initiative, that is outstanding question uh, from the um, day before yesterday. And uh, then we have the last agenda item, any other business where Chengetai will give briefing on state of play with the website uh, and uh, uh, financial 
situation of uh, IGF and any other questions that he deems necessary to, to uh, convey to the MAG. So let me now uh, turn uh, to the first of outstanding issues and that, that is intercessional activities. And to give the tone for this uh, conversation or exchange of views, uh, let me explain a uh, little bit where we're coming from and why we're talking about that. The uh, recurrent request coming from all quarters, uh, from all uh, groups, is to uh, improve tangible outputs uh, of IGF. And uh, uh, in Istanbul, in the run-up to Istanbul, during Istanbul meeting, we uh, thought uh, that we may want to uh, construct a process uh, that would address those concerns and in experimental way. Uh, start with the minimum we can with the simple thing and to test whether what worked in, in uh, run-up to Net Mundial conference would work also for IGF because of course there are differences in in the nature of the, uh, of the meetings and the purpose of the meetings and so on. So th therefore, uh, in the chair's uh, summary, it, uh, it was, Mag was invited to provide sort of input and to think about organizing intersessional activities on, on a theme which would not be too controversial, which would have developmental aspect and so on. You have read the report. Um, so then ICC basis proposed the theme, uh, policy menu to connect uh, for next billion online. And um, so now we would need to discuss how we, uh, how we will organize our work, how we will involve n national and regional IGFs, and how we, uh, what do we expect at the end uh, in order to address this uh, recurring request to uh, have more tangible outputs from uh, from IGF. So the floor is open. Uh, on this topic, Cheryl, please. You start, then Vera, then Avri. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to volunteer to continue to work on this and help with it. So thank you, Virat. I also wanted to volunteer to work on this, um, and what I wanted to recommend was that in terms of specific, we've got a couple of things to resolve. One is the process of engagement of the of the MAG and the working group, uh, and the second will be uh, the larger community and especially the national and regional IGFs. Um, I would suggest that once the working group is created, it could submit uh, its uh, plan and design, let's say, towards the end of um, December. Uh, if that's not too early or, or if uh, it's a big holiday period, then we could do it in by mid-Jan. Uh, and based on that, we could then proceed. We could uh, keep that uh, open for that work plan open for a week for comments, uh, take inputs from the MAG. Uh, if it needs to be more widely circulated, we could do that and then hope to begin the actual work by um, third week of Jan at the, at, at the latest, taking into consideration a five, seven day holiday period. So that would be the rough timetable through which we would launch this. Um, but I think the first test would be to get the working group together to get a specific plan with processes in place and uh, get inputs from the wider mags because it's really a product that everybody must own and then get into the actual uh, functioning of uh, the nuts and bolts of the working because we should aim to produce something by September. Hopefully, if we have a compendium and the end result, if, if, if those of you have had a chance to read that, is to produce a compendium of policy menus which do not override one over the other but basically give you a global level of information. I'd like to say one more thing, that the World Bank does a report once in two years, which is their strategic report on an issue. And um, uh, for 2016, 
the bank is leading a report specifically on a related and specifically direct issues. So we would also want to reach out to the World Bank because they are doing a global study to try and see what parts of this can contribute to their report and how they could engage with this discussion. Um, similarly, UNESCO, which has parts of this in the study that they are discussing, so those are at least two well identified. I'm sure ITU has similar uh, uh, information available. So a specific engagement with intergovernmental agencies and their involvement, which is also directly goes to the Section 72 of the Tunis Agenda in its operations uh, and its implementation. Thank you. So thank you. Avri, please. Thank you. I don't know how I made feedback, but good for me. Um, I was going to volunteer too, but now I'm confused again. Um, first of all, as I had spoken of before, um, I, I, I did not think it was supposed to be a top-down thing, yet another top-down thing where, where MAG decides what it's working on and, and then it goes about doing it. And what I had suggested when we had talked about it earlier was that, you know, perhaps we found a couple efforts that we got started, that each of those efforts had at least one MAG person that was willing to kind of shepherd the effort and, and see what they could get out of it and, and see who they could attract to working on something. And then at some milestone point down the road, we, we would look at the ones that had gotten started and, and, and see which of those had enough substance, had enough uh, capability of actually coming to an outcome to sort of put more energy behind it while allowing the others to keep working. And if they didn't come up with an outcome this year, well, then if there is another year, they would be able to continue working. And if there wasn't another year of the IGF, they could continue working with the regionals and, and other things. In other words, the thing that was important about it was that it was work that needed to be done, that there were MAG members and community participants at large that wanted to participate in and wanted to actually work. That outcome is important, but in some sense it's secondary to it being something that, that people want to do, that, that wants to get done. So I'm interested in, in working on an effort, but I'm kind of concerned about getting involved in something that has a lot of upfront process and is very mag top down. So I, I, I'm not sure, as I say, I, I'm back to being confused. Uh, but I, I do finally have some understanding of the menu, though I prefer to think of a buffet. Uh, as, as I mentioned, this, this is kind of exper experiment this, this year uh, to see how far we can get uh, in addressing the concerns because you see that where is the danger? The danger is to uh, change the nature of IGF. And uh, uh, in, in the conversations, I, I usually uh, use the analogy uh, of, of a tram. Uh, we, have a, we have built a tram. Uh, and that was back 10 years ago. And now there is a request to make this tram go faster. And, and we're trying to do that. And most probably we can make tram go faster. We can even turn tram run like a train. But what is, uh, what one thing is for sure, we cannot make this tram to fly. If we want to fly, we need to build an airplane. So therefore, there, there is a limitation how far we can uh, sort of evolve IGF uh, and then when we need to say okay this is not anymore IGF as it was created now we're creating either IGF version 2 or we're creating some something new so uh, and and therefore um, what we what we need to, to do is to experiment and see how that how that works in the in the setting if that works fine Let's, let's uh, continue in, in, in that direction. If that does not work, so then, then let's consider why it, it didn't work. Uh, Constance, please. 
Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm happy to volunteer and, and join the efforts with uh, ICC, Virat, and others, uh, but only if Avery joins the group. <laughs> and I will say this uh, because I think the, the menu proposal is interesting, although the document is a little long and, and I still need to go back to it. Um, and I think we should consider it as a proposal, a basis on which we can uh, build. I still have concerns about uh, launching new themes, another track, while we have already foundations, um, including the best practices, but also messages coming out of main sessions or workshops. And uh, I'd like to make sure we, we, uh, we stay consistent and also uh, reflect what's going on in terms of building the, the agenda. And I think the voice of civil society is absolutely critical, so I'm awaiting confirmation from Avery. Thank you. So thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Chair. Lynn Sainamore. Um, I also wanted to volunteer for that work because I actually think it's very critical to the IGF's future development. And while I support Avi's comments in principle, and I think there's an opportunity to do what she's suggesting, I think it's just as important that we actually ensure that we maximize that track or that opportunity to try and advance, you know, get the step step up that we've all said we think the IGF is both ready for and that we're all looking for. So I wanted to support um, Aubrey's comments and at the same time say that I think that we probably need a, another parallel effort as well to ensure that it actually does work to advance the IGF the way that um, Giannis, you know, you've, you've talked about a number of times. So thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. At the risk of saying the same thing now the fourth time or maybe the 14th, um, I, I'm very enthused about inviting the national and regional IGFs to consider participating and contributing. I think you may find, uh, I did a uh, mini study a couple of years ago with Dr. Um, Dima Epstein from Cornell at the time, and I think you may find that some will say we've already addressed this or we've addressed it differently or we are addressing it differently. So as long as we provide flexibility for the national or regional IGF to say, we really want to focus on the content aspect, we want to focus on um, uh, uh, indigenous content, we want to focus on, as long as we're open to that, I think um, that we will find some wish to participate. Others may not. As long as we're flexible and open, I think this can be a, a good idea. Uh, on the issue that um, Constance raised of we also have best practice forums, one of the really interesting things to me about the best practice forums is they brought in the non-attendee participants from the community because they draw on experts, people who are particularly interested in the topic of the best practice forum. So I'm not sure I see those as duplicative at, the, at this time. So thank you. Uh, I would need also some, some comments from government representatives because we are now uh, having all groups except government group on board on, on, on this very, very topic. Uh, Cheryl? Uh, hi. I, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to uh, respond and clarify a little bit. Uh, the proposal was in no way meant to be sort of a top-down proposal that we're wedded to. It really was created to further the discussion and to receive feedback from everyone, from government, from civil society, technical community, et cetera. Um, I do note that, I note Avery's comments, and I, in, in principle, I do understand and I, I support where she's going. I also hope that Avery will join the group. Um, it is critical that civil society is a part of this so that we can try and move it forward. And it's in no way intended to compete with the best practice fo forums or other, uh, other initiatives of the IGF. I think for me, I, I participated in, in part in one of the dynamic coalitions, and the difficulty was that we all found that while the work moving forward was good work, there was no process. And so we kind of got stuck right there, and that's something that we started talking about earlier. And so that was in part part of the reason why we looked to different criteria that are already exist and what different organizations such as IETF and others are doing 
to try to start to put together some initial criteria that we could discuss and see what made sense and see how we could kind of move this thing forward. So thank you. Thank you, Juan and Jose. Uh, Alfonso. Thank you, Chairman. At the risk of saying the same thing 14 times, as Marilyn said, I, I think that what I recommend is to have coherence in what we're doing intercessionally and with the main themes of the IGF itself. Uh, I, I already said that the next year is a special year, so maybe the IGF have to be a special the, um, itself. In past years, uh, the IGF has been some sort of, how can I tell it in English, smorgasbord of topics, you know, uh, distributed because it's a very bottom-up and it's good it's for policy dialogue. But I think that in next year we have to pay more attention in a little, not for the voices, but for the ears to whom we have to send this message. We're going to send this message to the global community, the global political community of, of the world. So we need to have coherence. I, 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 I just make this recommendation. Whatever topic is selected for the, for the main themes or, or the sub-themes, I suggest that also the intercessional efforts and also the best practice effort should be all surrounding that in order not to disperse the voice of the IGF in that special year. I think that this doesn't mean attrition to the, to the spirit of the IGF. I think it's a tactical move that we have to make in a very special year. Coherence, coherence, coherence. Thank you. So thank, thank you, uh, ICC basis. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I, I won't reiterate too, too much what, what has been said by my colleagues, but I would like to say that um, our intention in, in developing and, and putting forward this proposal was actually uh, in response to the consultation process that was initiated by the ICC sec um, the I, IGF Secretariat. So uh, it is in, in no way whatsoever intended as a top-down process. It, it's an idea that we put online uh, quite some time ago and then have extracted the abridged version uh, of these recommendations and, uh, and have circulated them for discussion, for cooperation and, and, and evaluation collectively in this, in, in this group today. Uh, and it is our hope that um, the uh, I, um, MAG can pull together a working group that would include um, Avri and, and, and others to, to a broad representation. Of, um, of colleagues to, to evolve and, and uh, help shape this uh, to reflect everyone's uh, perspectives and, and concerns so that we can come out with something that is uh, meeting the needs uh, for this very unique year, as everyone has pointed out. Thank so, you. Thank you, Virat. Shimon, I wanted to just uh, make three quick points. One is that the fact that this is a proposal by a non-MAG member in response to open consultation, which has found its way even in the synthesis paper of the Secretariat. Um, and so in that sense, if it's coming in response to an open consultation and has been on the net for almost a month and a half, that would be considered um, bottom-up because I'm now kind of, now I'm confused about the, the concept of bottom-up. Uh, it's a non-MAG member. It's on the net, it's for over a month, and it's in the synthesis paper. Um, the, the second point that I would like to um, mention is that when we said form a working groups, that's the first level. It doesn't have to be a working group of only MAG members. Uh, the working group is basically just trying to get the structure in place so that they can go consult uh, all the communities outside that working group and then bring other people into the working group, including and especially um, um, regional and national IGFs um, who I think would contribute to this in year one and hopefully when the compendium is ready it will serve as a capacity building exercise for them so it has a two-way meaning for, for those, both of which are strongly enshrined in the Tunis agenda and the last point I would make is that we would request uh, both governments and especially Avery and our colleagues Mark others to join the group and 
contribute them with their ideas and tell us and guide us on how we can make it more inclusive, take it out to all people and have the whole community contribute to that. So we're ev completely open to any of the discussions that come in. But we have to start somewhere and this is a submission uh, for us to consider. So thank you, Mark. Thanks so much. Well, that's a very neat uh, segue uh, to, uh, to government uh, um, in respect of uh, my role as, uh, as a contributor. I mean, I'm very happy to, um, uh, to put my name forward and, and, and engage um, sub substantively in the work. I think the, the problem um, for myself and perhaps uh, I might be speaking on behalf of Anna Nevis and uh, Olga Cavalli as well is that we're GAC members and we're completely overwhelmed by, with the I ICANN and IANA uh, processes uh, and I ICANN accountability processes at the moment. Um, but um, with, with that caveat in terms of pressure on us as, as government leads uh, in ICANN on, on all that loading, um, yes, I, I'd be very happy to, uh, to contribute uh, from, from the UK uh, uh, seat. Thank you. So thank you, Fiona. Yes, thank you, Yanis, and my apologies to you and to others in the room, but I just want to understand what the question is on the table. Is the idea that there, we want to create a working group to look at intercessional activities and the ICC basis contribution informs that, or is that solely what we're going to be looking at? Or is it the idea that the ICC basis document starts the conversation, and as the working group continues its conversation, perhaps things change or get amended? I mean, I think that would be helpful for me to understand what exactly the question is on the table. And then um, just as a point of process, I, I think that the MAG needs to figure out how to incorporate in every step of every activity it does the concept of public consultation. And, I, 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 and, and we probably need to figure out what public consultation actually means for us and define it and actually have some parameters around how we actually do it. That might be helpful to do, um, not just for this, but for all the things that we're doing. So in clarifying your que uh, question, so I, I see that this working group uh, that I would like to uh, ask coordinate and, and uh, moderate to um, Avri, Virat, Lin, and um, and and the lucky winner is <laughs> Murad. Murad, as a government representative, but of course uh, taking into account that uh, uh, Mark already volunteered. Uh, would uh, would do following. They would design uh, or would come with proposal how this intercessional work could be constructed, how the national regional IGFs could be involved, how they could input in the in the document, uh, or whatever uh, this this uh, uh, intercessional work will produce. So uh, what would be the theme? There is a proposal from ICC basis that I, I hear gather some traction, uh, not 100 percent, but, but uh, there were a number of voices in favor of that proposed topic, and uh, uh, would uh, organize and coordinate that process, uh, maybe uh, proposing to call uh, to organize an open-ended uh, process uh, involving all community when, when uh, things are very clear and then would be uh, working or whatever output uh, we would bring to the IGF meeting in Brazil. So that is maybe one of the most uh, uh, long-term uh, projects that uh, we're now uh, embarking on. So this is this is my my answer to your question, Benedicta, please. Uh, yes, uh, just to comment that by default, <laughs> we are uh, interested in being uh, contributed as much as we can to any working group that will be established here, that uh, applies to the self-assessment group to the other group that was also established on outreach and communication on, on this one as 
as government, but also as part of the Brazilian Steering Committee. We, uh, of course, for us, uh, since this event will be held under the ages of the Steering Committee, we want to make sure that we have people working on all those tracks and contributing to the extent we can. Uh, we, uh, we hope to rely on this collective uh, capacity of, of work, including government participation, uh, and uh, we hope that our ambition uh, will not be exceeded by our capacity, but uh, by default we want to, to be part of, uh, of all the groups. We'll make sh the best we can to contribute uh, to, to the success of this. Thank you. So thank, thank you uh, for that. As I mentioned, they, uh, we will do this doodle pool where everybody will be able to sign up for different groups as, as we go along and create them. So uh, thank you very much. I think we, we got to the point uh, of, um, of agreement. Uh, Peter? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Peter Dengate Thrush. Just to make the same point that I made earlier, that there is a risk um, if you take the intercessional work and you link that to liaison with the regional and national IGFs of running two or three different processes together. Um, now, obviously, we don't need to form a separate working group on every single issue, and there's a risk of over, over too many committees. But just to, just to keep an eye on the fact that the intercessional work is one thing, and we've got a series of targets of work for the intercessional work, and we've had a very carefully prepared suggestion from, from, from the community about that. The issue with the regional and national IGFs and linking them to the work is actually slightly different, and it actually would come to its apex at the session, if you like, at the IGF itself. So it, it, it's, it's in many ways not related to intersessional work. It's a way of bringing them into the sessional work. So, as I say, there's a risk of having a, a different working group on every good idea, and I'm not, not suggesting that, but just to keep an eye on the fact that there really are two quite distinct issues being bundled together here, and maybe this working group can manage them both, but um, just to keep an eye on it so that if they do start to separate out, we, we, we take proper account of it. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, uh, Peter. I think we, we will get uh, uh, reports on the progress on each of the uh, tracks we were creating uh, as, as we advance, and um, uh, if there will be need to make a correction, we certainly will make a correction. Um, so, thank you for, for, for this uh, um, decision. Uh, we have maybe one another uh, topic. This, this is what we do then with um, uh, best practices. Uh, I think we have identified best practices, uh, the teams for best practices, uh, new works would be uh, internet and gender. Uh, that would be IXPs and maybe IPv4, IPv6 transition. Uh, that, that was uh, proposed and supported by, by, by many. I see that there is a request uh, from uh, North, the Nortis, who was the um, consultant working uh, in the best practice uh, compilations this year. And uh, if you don't mind, I would, I would invite him to uh, uh, share brief brief experience that that he has. What? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, what I would like to share is more as a private person than than as the consultant because my my tenure is up by now. But I, what I would like you to realize is that when you have asked the these experts from around the world to deliver this input, you also raised a lot of expectations with them. Because what, what actually happened in the two groups that I was uh, able to, 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 to facilitate is that they came up with questions that really tra transgressed their own constituencies, and which made it actually topics that are multi-stakeholder and that they cannot solve themselves within their own constituency because they need other stakeholders who may have been at the table or were not at the table because they were not interested or not aware of these topics. So in, in other words, there were a lot of questions raised that need addressing that now there is an expectation of all these, all these experts that they are looking to you basically to follow it up somehow. 
And that's the message that I would like to, to, to convey to you, that, that perhaps it looks like these topics are over, but in the end, they're not, because the, the real questions that they cannot solve on their own are now at the table. And that's why I would I'd like to urge you to, to look at that and see in what way the MAG would actually, and the IGF could actually help these topics forward. So that could be by inviting workshops from basing and stemming from these reports. And that's another way of looking at it than, than looking at it at a way that, that needs more work, but maybe they could be solved by bringing people together or taking these topics to other constituencies where these topics could be solved. And that's basically the lesson that I took with me from the work of the past months. And thank you for your attention. Good afternoon. So thank you very much for sharing your experience with us and your so thoughts. Of course, we, we may hope that um, organizations or, or uh, individuals will propose workshops on those outstanding issues or, or issues that came up as a result of this engagement on best practice compilations. Um, so any, uh, any volunteers, any thoughts uh, on how to best organize the, the best practice uh, work stream? Constance? Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to, to um, with others, to, to lead, um, to co-lead on the best practices, but my understanding, again, is that really the best practices uh, should be part of the broader effort on intercessional work, and I'd, I'd like this to be part of the same working group uh, Virat, Avri, and others would, would join. Um, uh, just on the, the, the comments made by, by Voot, um, to add on them, and I, I echo what he said, uh, there, there is a need as we develop these best practices to make sure that all the workshop organizers on related themes feed into or um, send information. And this is something that technically did not happen uh, for logistical reasons, uh, but we, we should absolutely do for 2015. Thanks. So thank you for volunteering together with others. Desiree, are you volunteering for this? Most definitely. Um, I'd like to volunteer for this one, uh, as well as I would have sent an email about another uh, working group. But uh, concerning this best practice, I think um, in the past we had some, um, a situation what, what we did we created was a, sh a shared platform, a shared document p platform or portal of some sort, so that um, I'm not exactly sure what the, what the secretary's facilities are, but we can probably use something provided free, of course, from Google or another uh, provider. So thank, thank you. Constance, please. Um, just to uh, bounce on the, the question about the platform, what the IHF Secretariat did for the 2014 edition is that they looked at the Net Mundial online platform for uh, collecting, compiling comments uh, before integrating them in the, 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 the draft uh, through an, an iterative process. Uh, intentionally, uh, we, we followed the Net Mundial methodology that had been successful for Sao Paulo. Thank you. So thank you. We have now two volunteers. I'm, um, I I'm not very sure that this should be the same uh, working group because I, I see that there are slight, slight differences in, also in, um, uh, in the uh, reason behind launching of that activity. Uh, but um, so we, we, can, we can see if um, that working group can take that on board and, and whether at one point the best practices may, may just spring out from, from from the, that working group, if that's acceptable. So thank you. We have uh, two more uh, volunteers, coordinators of, of this part of the part of the activities, being uh, uh, part of the bigger working group on intersessional activities. So now let us move to the uh, next outstanding question: is the Net Mondial Initiative and uh, IGF uh, taking uh, seat? Uh, in the council, not permanent seat, but taking seat in the council uh, of uh, Net Mondial Initiative. Uh, Desiree, on this question or on the previous one? Please. On, on the previous one, Mr. Chair, Desiree Zachariah speaking. Uh, 
what I wanted a, a, a clarification on, was it intended for there to be a working group, a coordinator of best practices, or was every working um, best practice group uh, required to do their own coordination? So I think at the beginning we need to start with the uh, one uh, sort of uh, two coordinators working and and launching the process, and then we will see. I I, I think that every uh, every best practice stream should have a coordinator, but for the moment we are starting with the one launching everything, and then we will uh, go uh, sort of in in in, in, in each section, each stream. Uh, so I understand this is on, on the, the topic on um, N NMI and uh, uh, IGF taking seat. Peter, are you on this question? Your, your name tag is up again all the time. No, you're not. So let me, let me then uh, uh, list that I have not noted. We have Marilyn, we have uh, Juan Alfonso, we have Mark, we have Leah. Uh, and in that order, I will take comments. Marilyn, please. Thank you. Say something good, please. <laughs> My name is Marilyn Cade. <laughs> that we have heard a number of times today. <laughs> On that, we have unanimous agreement. <laughs> Let me open my comments by saying that um, I was, um, like everyone uh, in the wider community, uh, interested to see the announcement of uh, something called the Net Mundial Initiative. I've done my best to follow its progress uh, and variations as it is evolving. I have still a number of um, concerns about where it may go and what it may do. Um, and I think it um, will continue to evolve with further input from many in the community who called for more, um, for less top-down and more organic um, development. I understand that the um, so-called seats are not uh, permanent seats now, but that does not change the concern that I have about a linkage between the MAG chair position and the Net Mundial uh, initiative. Um, I am very aware of the opportunities where really only the MAG chair and the MAG secretariat will be able to speak in a variety of important settings uh, coming up ahead of us that includes the CSTD meeting, it includes um, hopefully the UNESCO meeting, but many others where um, the representational identity of being uh, the MAG chair is, um, is really important. Now, we as the MAG are uh, advisors to the Secretary General. We are not a, a legal body. We're not an institution. Um, and I'm sure that the intention in reaching out to uh, make this offer was uh, well-intentioned, but I'm uncomfortable with um, uh, linking the, um, with having the MAG chair take um, a seat on that, um, in, in, in that structure. Um, not the least because I don't, uh, I'm not really sure how it is contributing to the evolution and enhancement and strengthening the IGF. I think that's yet to be seen. My priority is this organization. Um, having said that, if there is a view widely across the MAG that it would be good to have a limited liaison relationship with NMI, then I would propose that that should become the secretariat and that it not become overwhelmingly a uh, time commitment since I'm overwhelming today with the workload we have ahead of us. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, Juan Alfonso. Thank you, Chairman. Before giving my opinion, I want uh, two clarifications. First is now I'm going to speak in my personal capacity given my, uh, and give my opinion to this uh, problem at hand. 
And the second is that I don't want to evaluate ideologically the, any initiative. Uh, many here should know or many should imagine that I have very strong ideolo ideological views. But I want, as a member of the MAG, I try to leave that outside this room because the MAG is not a policy group. It's not a policy working group. We are an organizing working group sort of wedding planners, but with a more fancy name. <laughs> so so in, in this case, is in, with this view, is how I want to analyze this, this subject. The first is about initiatives itself. I think it's good. It's good that many initiatives regarding Internet governance happen. And on the other way, we cannot oppose. But instance, if the planet Mars wants to have an initiative in Internet governance, we should applaud that happens. Also, we cannot oppose. They will do it if they want to. Even closer to home, if the Vatican wants to have an Internet governance <coughs> initiative, that's welcome. So, uh, and especially if this initiative wants to collaborate. So I think it's good that this initiative opens for their collaboration with the Internet Governance Forum, but I think the invitation was badly done because the MAG, as I tell, tell you, we are a little more than wedding planners. We are not the ones to be invited. IGF was convened by the Secretary General of the United Nations as a result of a decision agreed by head of state in a summit. So I think this invitation should be addressed to the United Nations Secretary General. The Secretary General then they maybe he can appoint the head of the MAG, or maybe the head of the Secretariat, or maybe the head of UNDESA, under secretary, or maybe somebody on UNDESA, or maybe they, because we are his advisors, maybe they will, the ball will come back to us to give them advice on who should sit in that. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is about collaboration. The, if, if, the, if there's a, an, an invitation to collaborate, it should be without any strings attached. I find very puzzling that in the website you have to say that you agree with the net mundial outcomes or something like that. I was wondering to, to make an experiment to propose myself and ask, answering no if I, uh, I agree with net mundial uh, outcome and see what happens. You know, because this is... Uh, this is not collaboration if, it's, if it has a condition. It's like the Martians say, I want to collaborate with you, but you have to have green skin to collaborate with us. Or like the Vatican, I, have to, I want to collaborate with you, but you have to be Roman Catholics to collaborate with me. Uh, that's good. Maybe they want to have an Internet governance initiative only for, for Roman Catholics, but that's an internal affair. That is not a global outreach thing. So if they want to collaborate, it should not have any strings attached. And finally, I said that I was speaking this living ideology, but maybe you were wondering. So I will say a little bit about that. I can only say at this stage that of the three conveners, I like much one of them, I dislike much one of them, and the third is comme si comme ça. The word is out there. You can figure it out. Thank you. Okay. So, you, you know, you know, since we're in, in this mood, uh, there's one, one, one. Uh, few people are in the in the hot air balloon, uh, in the mist. They don't know where they are. And uh, so they are trying to understand, and, and then somebody, somebody sees their uh, people on the roof of the building, and they uh, approach them and say, "Where we are?" And uh, from 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 people on the roof answer, "You are in the balloon." Uh, thank you. So after after a few seconds, I say, "I know where we are. We're over the State Department." Why? Because answer was very precise but totally useless. <laughs> Sorry to say, I didn't hear what, what will your position, what, should we join or not? <laughs> now, 
Of course. I, I believe in collaboration. I think that even, even we, if we have, in any topic, if we have ideological differences, if we have very, if we have the terms of reference of the collaboration, and in this case we're collaborating to make Internet a better medium for, for humanity and mankind. It's like going to a party. You sometimes are invited to a party and you go. Maybe the party turns sour and then you leave out. But you could not prejudge so any you. initiative. So I'm for collaboration. But there are two things that for me precludes collaboration. The invitation, it has to go through the proper channels. It has to go to the United Nations Secretary General and he will, maybe he will appoint you and we are all applaud that. And, and the second thing, that collaboration should not have a, 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 some strange attacks on some condition. That's ridiculous that in, in the website you said you have to be with, you, you have to endorse this, this document. You know, uh, the IGF, by the way, has much more legitimacy than any other institution or initiative that are out there or will be out there. Thank you. Because Thank you. it comes from the United Nations, it comes from a summit in which our heads of state, with the voice also that it was first time in the United Nations summit of, of the Thank other stakeholders, you. all asked for this. And Thank everybody you. was on board on this. Thank so you, I think that my, my answer to your question is to collaborate, but if it's invited, right, and without conditions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Very, very clear answer. Uh, so I had um, uh, Mark and then Leah. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think we should uh, respond positively to the invitation. Uh, it's clear from my understanding that uh, the Net Mundial initiative uh, seeks to complement the IGF um, and uh, through its objectives in creating an online platform that's going to serve to support developing countries, projects, and um, uh, expand international effort in the whole area of internet governance, it seems highly appropriate that there is a, a meaningful conjunction of uh, the initiative and, and the IGF. So I would support that. I'm not volunteering to be the MAG representative uh, on it uh, if you're looking for somebody from, from the MAG uh, to perform that function. I, I, um, as I indicated before, we're pretty, pretty heavy, heavily loaded. Um, but I, I also wanted to sort of raise the potential of the initiative to contribute in taking forward IGF activities intercessionally. The, the, you know, that could be explored through our uh, uh, direct uh, participation in the, uh, in the Council. Um, and reporting back to the MAG uh, accordingly and so on. So uh, broadly I'm in favour of it and uh, I hope we can take a quick decision on that uh, uh, in terms of um, identifying who could, who could lead for us and report back to us on, on the uh, Council's work and so on. Thank you. So thank, thank you. We have uh, exactly 70 minutes doing that. A Num number of people have asked for the floor. Uh, Leah, please. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I missed something. I, I thought we were still on the previous agenda item, and I wanted to make an intervention about that. Is that still okay? And I wanted to, to get a clear sense of what's happening now um, with the working groups and what the process is uh, with going forward. And my, I was trying to put together a list of how many we've set up and uh, what the process will be for volunteering, just to make sure that people in the MAG have a chance who are not here who have left the meeting or couldn't attend uh, can still have a chance to volunteer, but also to see how the wider community will be able to join these working groups. Uh, and just I will try, if, I will if, try if, to answer, answer those questions, and I'll try to answer those questions uh, okay. in my concluding remarks. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Anna? Thank you very much. Um, well, um, I have to say that I'm um, I'm, in, I'm in favor of uh, with what Juan Fernandez said. 
Uh, I have a problem because I, I don't understand uh, what, what Net Mundial is. I understand what Net Mundial event was, but I don't understand what Net Mundial is. And uh, I don't understand why Net Mundial is inviting Mark. And Mark is, is not a legal body. And, uh, and uh, actually, I think that uh, if uh, Net Mundial initiative people that are well involved think that um, Mark uh, the, or IGF should be um, discussed or I don't want to, de to say part of. Uh, I think that the, the invitation must be addressed to the, to the United Nations Secretary General and not to the, to the chair of the MAC uh, because uh, um, we, we are not a legal body. We are advisors and uh, uh, it would be the other way around. I think that uh, IGF should discuss Net Mundial Initiative and not Net Mundial Initiative to have MAC on board. Um, and uh, at, as it has been said, it's good to have initiatives on internet governance. Of course, we are not against at all. But uh, the problem is that, as I don't understand it, my problem is when they start to do something that touch uh, w where my, w where the policy, uh, where I'm navigating um, has uh, something to do with, so I become a bit cautious. So I don't have any problems with the, with the initiative as long as it doesn't touch anything I understand. Thank you. So thank you, Anna. I, I, th I think uh, Nora ex tried to explain <laughs> what this initiative is about. You know that uh, in uh, the um, uh, Net Mundial final document uh, in, in the part of Way Forward, it has been very uh, strong call uh, to support IGF and to strengthen IGF through different means. And initiative, as, as we heard, is to uh, contribute towards implementation of Net Mondial outcome. So that, that is how we see there has been, of course, lack of, lack of information from Nora's clarification. We heard that there will be a number of parts. One is uh, activity in this year's uh, Davos meeting. Uh, where uh, there will be a session organized specifically on internet governance promoting multi-stakeholder model. Uh, there, there is a work to create a, a platform where those who are interested could find information, uh, so uh, sort of solution or proposal where to turn when, when solution is needed and so on. So th we, these are elements that we know. Tomorrow will be a, a call Inform, uh, information call uh, where uh, every question will be clarified within the limit of time allocated for the call. So uh, I would like also to say that the invitation, as far as I understand, is open-ended. Everybody is invited to submit their or to manifest their interest. Of course, one, one can understand that maybe it is not overly polite uh, through the press invite Secretary General of United Nations do that. Uh, there are different other forms how to do it, but in principle, everybody is invited. And actually, it is not a MAG which is invited, that is, IGF is invited to be part of the Council. But since IGF is a, a process, the MAG is representative of that process, and uh, the, the, the MAG is invited to nominate a representative. So we had this ex initial exchange on, on the uh, on the uh, on the mag list, uh, where a few of, of uh, mag members said that there should be a chair, few said that that, that should not be a but but that, that was in the context of permanent uh, permanent uh, seat for for IGF mag. Uh, now we need to to decide. So there is a proposal that 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 should not be a, a, a member of the uh, council. That should be just a liaison to the council. So this is where, where we are now. Um, next on my list is Maria Victoria. Thank you, Chair. Um, following <coughs> your explanation, I'm still wondering if uh, MAG or IGF had the mandate to, to answer or, or to respond to such uh, invitations. And as far as I see, we have two options. We can 
either following the UN procedure, as Juan already explained, to have an invitation addressed to the Secretary General because we belong to that, or we can follow Marilyn's uh, proposal of having a limited liaison to, to go to Net Mundial and uh, I tend to favor probably the, the second one because this is probably the, the easiest. Thank you, Chair. So thank you. Virat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, um, first, I want to just preface this comment by saying that I have personally, in, as, a, as a wedding planner, the highest um, regard for the Net Mundial principles because it involves discussions around Net Mundial principles. I think that was an excellent example of how multi-stakeholder initiatives can work bottom-up, and also for the aspirations and objectives that Net Mundial initiative uh, is trying to pursue. So I want to park that point first. Four sets of questions have been raised today and online in this discussion. One is around process. There's a question around protocol and propriety of invitations. Um, on the clarity of objectives and what it hopes to achieve. And then there is the issue of implications, is once you join, what happens. I'm going to try and uh, limit myself to the point of implications for MAG in case this invitation has to be processed. Um, any of the MAG members are free to join this, as you've already clarified. There's no restriction. Anybody can put their name forward. They can do that. Many of the MAG members actually join many of the initiatives. They serve on it. There's absolutely no issue. Um, but the MAG, per se, has always been secular in that it has been equidistant and loves all such initiatives equally. It has not shown and it has not um, gone and fed into or participated in any discussion as either MAG but it has shown the highest respect for these events. It has found place to discuss plenty pot to discuss uh, wicket to discuss substantially net mundial, and I think again it will discuss. But it has always been secular. Um, the business, as you are aware, has asked about thirty odd questions. We have sort of put that online. We are hoping some of those questions will be addressed tomorrow. They are both processed and substantive. But here is the part that I think uh, we need to pay attention to. I will read from the NAC Mundial, Net Mundial Initiative website, which is embrace Net Mundial principles as a precondition to be nominated to the Coordination Council, to sign up your name as a public advocate of Net Mundial principles. But the one that MAG needs to look at carefully is the following. If representing an organization the nominee must confirm that their organization will officially embrace the Net Mundial principles. So you have to confirm that if you were to join. Now, would that be the MAG as the organization, or would it be United Nations or UNDESA? What would the organization be? And if it is the organization, then and let's assume it's MAG, because if it's UN or UNDESA, that's a whole different ballgame. But let's assume it's the MAG then each one of us has to confirm to it. But each one of us then represent either companies or civil societies or organizations and have been voted through a process to come into this, into this entire thing, which means each one of us then have to embrace this. That is a legal issue. It is one thing to be in a room helping contribute to a non-binding document through a rough consensus. It is something else to write in that we officially embrace this as an organization. So I'm on the point of the legal issue that is, which arises out of this verbiage here, not about individuals, but about organizations. And that means all of us have to then consider the implications on, of this on each one of us, on the governments that we represent, on the companies that we represent. And that, it seems to me, is not clear. So if we can get some clarity on that, on the questions that have been sought, then perhaps there is a way forward. But if, in fact, this means but each one must accept it and embrace it, then that will have to go back to a bunch of at least 55 into 3, about 165 lawyers who will have to look at this and then be able to respond on whether you can say yes to something like this. 
So I would leave it at that, but I have no clarity. But this is the phrase that I think comes into play when we talk about you as a chair of MAG representing on that coordination council. Thank you. You sounded like a lawyer yourself. Are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I've never been accused of that, but no, thank you. Constance, <laughs> uh, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you for the good laugh you're at. Um, with regards to this, uh, to this important question, um, in, in, in my view, there really is no urgency to address this question. Um, I mean, a lot of communities, organizations have uh, raised some uh, concerns, questions, uh, requests for clarification about the Net Mundial Initiative. Um, and we, we, we do have in mind that it's difficult to build two houses at the same time. At the Internet Society, we are very committed to uh, focusing on the IGF. At the same time, we have a, we have a, a fluid um, dialogue with, with stakeholders, all stakeholders, and, and Brazil, and, um, and we are committed to the Sao Paulo Declaration. Um, since there is no more permanent seat uh, on the Council, um, again, I, I don't think that the 15th of December uh, deadline uh, is for this group to consider. I think uh, we should take the time to see how the initiative evolves. Uh, again, we are very interested in the Sao Paulo uh, Declaration and we'd like to see how we can implement some of the principles through the IGF. Um, and in my view, we should explore how we take those principles and inject them in the agenda of IGF 2015. Um, I also believe that Brazil will play a natural role of liaison between the initiative and the IGF community uh, since, uh, since they're hosting um, IGF 2015. Um, maybe this is a question this group can reconsider once there's more clarity uh, on the Net Mundial initiative, uh, bearing in mind that um, the Sao Paulo Declaration is a very strong text for our group. It really calls the IGF to, to strive towards um, better outcomes for the IGF and uh, strengthen processes. So I think we should, we should keep the channel of communication absolutely open, uh, but at the same time we still, have, um, we still have time. If the invitation went to the Secretary General um, and that there was a decision that the, the chair should, uh, should play some sort of role, um, I, I do believe that we should make sure we have strong and complete consensus within the MAG uh, before proceeding. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, Fiona is next. Yes, thank you, Yanis. Um, I'd, I'd like to start just by associating with the comments that Mark made earlier about why this could be a good thing um, and why I'd be, why I'd be supportive of it. Um, if nothing else, whatever happens with the Net Mondial Initiative, and it's still in its fairly early formative stages, it has the potential to impact the IGF, and it seems, if nothing else, understanding what's happening and having that liaison of understanding is a good thing. Um, so again, I think it would be useful. I think the bottom line, though, is whether you as the chair personally have the time and if you're willing to do it, I, I think it should be something that should be considered and you should do if you want to. Um, I do find it slightly ironic that we spent the better part of the last three days talking about outreach and how to engage with other parts of the internet governance community, but then when a group of stakeholders tries to put together an initiative and reaches out to us, the response from some of the room are, is no, and procedural, which by the way is very governmental in nature. Um, so it's just an interesting observation on, on the conversation of the last few days. So again, I just would like to agree with the comments made by Mark earlier. Thank you. So thank you. Um, Avri. Thank you. Keep having uh, the, the feedback. Uh, thank you. Um, I tend to, first of all, I wanted to actually bring up the notion that while the Tunis Agenda had the IGF initiated by the UN. It is not a UN body. And so I think any of the formality 
of, of consideration that we've gotten into about needing to go to the Secretary General and all that is, is really more complexity than, than we need to get into. Again, I, I tend to look at this one rather simply. The hosts of a place we're going for a major meeting who are putting themselves out to, to welcome us to their country for an important meeting are also part of another endeavor that is basically inviting us to participate. And I believe that the IGF should participate. Now, whether it's the chair or whether we say, no, it's actually better for the secretariat to attend and to do the follow through and understanding and such that we need to do to, you know, be there, to participate, to be the communication path, call it a liaison, call it a council member. It's just a name. It, it really doesn't matter. These, these associations, they come, they go. We should participate in it. It is somewhat about the IGF. It concerns the IGF. And I think we're overthinking it. I think we have an invite to participate in something. But if it is too heavyweight to send the MAG or the MAG chair, I think it makes a perfect sense for the Secretariat to participate and to track it for us and come back and let us know what's actually happening as opposed to dealing with all the rumors and everything we get from here and there and so on. So that's, that's my view on it. So thank, thank you, um, uh, Hossam. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I, 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 I think the Net Mondial Initiative could be a very great thing. We don't know now. We have no idea exactly where it is going. But for sure that um, for the MAG share to have a seat, it would be seen as decisions coming from the council where the MAG share will have one out of 25 uh, voting right, like having a consent of the MAG. And this is, I don't think, is uh, uh, valid. This is why uh, a liaison uh, or, or synchronizing with uh, the Net Mondial Initiative could be a good thing. But uh, having um, formalization of having uh, the MAG share on there, I think it would be uh, uh, misleading uh, as such. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Cheryl. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do recognize that there are a number of outstanding questions with respect to a formal seat on the Coordination Council. And so I think at this time um, I would be hesitant to uh, support that. Now, participation definitely comes in many different forms, and I think the IGF has, uh, at least since the last IGF in Istanbul, really try to participate with the Net Mundial Initiative um, and bring forward some of the things. And I'm sure that we'll be doing that again uh, moving forward. But with respect to the actual council seat, I, I, I'm not sure that we're there yet. I think it, it would be fair to first have those answers to the questions before moving forward. And I think over the past few days, um, we have focused quite a lot on procedure. And it brings me to my next point. It seems as we're coming up on this 10th anniversary, there are actually a lot of questions with respect to the role of the MAG um, in a number of different areas. So with respect to the selection of themes and sub-themes, how we go about that, the intercessional work. Um, I saw a note on the list about social networking and fundraising and other requirements that some of us may, may not understand or some of the roles may have changed uh, now that we are at this new inflection point of the IGF. And so I would suggest that perhaps we look towards creating some type of a, if not a main session, maybe a special session that really looks to these issues and gets community input and, and uh, sort of discusses what the role of the MAG really should be moving forward. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Fatima. Thanks, Mr. Chair. This is Fatima. Uh, in my opinion, and of course I could be wrong, the, the role of the MAG members and of our chair is working in the preparation of each uh, ICF uh, without external distraction or activity. 
And of course, the outreach could be done be, uh, relate, regarding to the activities of the MAG or the ICF, not uh, with the external activity. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Juan Alfonso, for the second time. Uh, two things, Chairman. First, I beg to disagree with Avery. We are United Nations. The MAG, who selected the MAG? I think I was selected by the Secretary General. At least that's what it says in the website. And who the Secretariat to whom it, it depends, depends on UNDESA, also United Nations. So we are United Nations. But that will, like, will be the liking of somebody or the unliking of some others. Uh, but that's a reality. And the other thing, uh, let me tell you again, I'm, I think, as uh, Fiona said and Mark said before, I, I think that we should collaborate, that all internet governance initiatives should collaborate. But I put all, only this comment that the invitation should go through the proper channels and with no a string attached. And, if the, and to the case, of if Mac should need to have consensus or not, please, uh, I don't want to again repeat that we are only, we are not a policy group. We are planners. I don't want to say it again because maybe it's not so uh, sexy, but we are planners. We, we advise for the, for the planning of, of, of an event. We are event planners. So we, we should not, of course, personally, we should have, and everybody has, this ideology can be in for it or against it. But it's earlier to prejudge, even, even knowing that some of the organization I don't personally like, but I, I can give them the, the, maybe it's useful, I don't know. If it's not useful, we can step out. But um, Chairman, uh, I think that invitation should go, I repeat, through UN channels. And then he, they will decide whether it's the MAG to participate, where the Secretariat, whereas maybe the President of the General Assembly will be the, the representative of, of, of the Secretariat. Thank you. So thank, thank you. Um, so I, what I hear um, is that uh, IGF should be present and cooperate. So this is, this is what I hear. So that, that's already a, a one, one conclusion that, that we can make. The IG, uh, so Net, Net Mondial, as I mentioned already, was very supportive to, uh, to IGF. And uh, as far as we heard on Monday, the initiative is supposed to strengthen IGF or to contribute towards strengthening IGF. So again, that, that is something positive. Though we, all of us, we acknowledge that there is a lack of information about um, these um, where this initiative is going. And um, so, um, therefore, it is uh, always good to be present and be able to um, influence uh, whatever uh, decisions the Council will be uh, making. Uh, if we are absent, we cannot influence in any way. So, uh, therefore, the uh, agreement uh, or consensus that we have reached here that we need to collaborate and be present is already uh, is already a, a good a good decision. Juan, Juan Alfonso? I can agree with that, but the precondition has to be retire, uh, uh, removed from the website, from the understanding that collaboration cannot have precondition because that is not collaboration. If, if it's, it's interesting. Virat, uh, mention all the details. It sounds like a fraternity thing, that you have to be a member of that. That's not collaboration. That's not open. That's not global. That's not a multi-stakeholder. That, that's really, uh, I don't know, it was really a bad idea. And I think that they should retire that and then move on. That maybe, maybe it's useful. I don't know. But that, that has to be taken out before accepting anything. Because otherwise, all the things, and it has even legal repercussions. Because IGF is a very open, very wide, it's the strength, diversity of opinions. And how can we join, collaborate with something that is asking us to, to, to with preconditions? That, that's really out of the question. That will have to be removed first before any other decision should be taken. Also, I understand you are very passionate about this thing. I have not finished yet what I wanted to say. 
and I, I'm trying to accommodate your concerns and concerns of everybody in this room. Constance? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, my understanding is that there's uh, not necessarily a consensus in, in the room, um, and uh, my, my recommendation at this stage would be that we absolutely keep the door open and the channels of communications uh, open um, and ensure that we follow the developments of Net Mundial Initiative, and perhaps this group could reconsider uh, the question of a liaison as at its um, next meeting once uh, there will be a feeling a general feeling that everything has been clarified questions from the community uh, addressed um, I, again I, I do not see the the urgency uh, since there is no more permanent seat um, and um, I, I my recommendation would be that we keep the channels of communication open but I do not hear that we have consensus to participate at this stage. Thank you. Uh, yeah, because I haven't said that yet. I, uh, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying that uh, the, the consensus is that we need to engage. Now, uh, we are invited to uh, join the council, and here there is no consensus. But there was, there was a proposal that uh, uh, we may nominate somebody to liaise with the council until uh, the clarification is, uh, or more information is uh, uh, provided when the uh, direction in which initiative will go will be clear, and then uh, we may uh, reconsider our position. So the uh, nomination of the liaison uh, to the council seems to me might be the way forward uh, by consensus by this group, with the understanding that that would not be the part, I mean, the formal, formally part of the uh, council at this moment, maybe joining later, but uh, being, being as a liaison. Leah? Thank you. Your summary just addressed what I wanted to say, so I would like to add my support to that proposal which you just put thank forward. Thank you. Thank you. So now the, the question is uh, who should be the liaison? Uh, Juan Alfonso, do you have a proposal? No, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Chairman. I'm sorry to defer with you. We usually have the uh, same view, but I think that it's even premature what you're proposing. It's like, you know, we have in Spanish the, the saying, you give a finger, then they take the hand, something like that. Uh, I, I think that we should give, send a message, maybe through the Brazilian here, to the Net Mundial Initiative uh, organizers of these concerns about the invitation, about the preconditions, and then to see what, how is the, what is the answer to this uh, concern of ours. And after we receive the response to this concern, maybe we can take this step of have a liaison, a little liaison, or a little, little liaison before having a, a full-fledged uh, council uh, member. So I will suggest that we have to wait, we have to send the ball to their court and wait to their response. Thank you. Um. I, I understand, uh, uh, Juan Alfonso, that you have very strong feelings about, about the issue. Uh, Virat and Marilyn afterwards. Mr. Chairman, I wonder if there is a way for um, Chengatai perhaps to not be on the council but be, av be available at the meetings. Um, so that he can report in to the MAG on what the improvements are. And uh, if that is a workable solution, then it's not like he's, he's not going to, he, he was certainly not on the Coordination Council, but if they're allowing observers or people, I don't know whether the, even this is not known, whether the Coordination Council's meetings will be open or closed. That's open, okay. So if there are open meetings, then I suppose many people will attend. Then 
many of the MAG members can attend in their own right, then nobody can stop that, as people attending a meeting, but not on the coordination. The, the, all these issues arise when you join the coordination council. It would be impossible for us to stop anybody in their individual capacity, including, I have to say, you, uh, if you want to go attend a meeting. Uh, it's when you're invited and you sort of join the coordination council when all of these sort of issues stem up. So if there is a way to be in that meeting with for 40 other people, not on the coordination council, then I suppose it's open to anybody, just as it would be to the IG secretariat to be in the meeting and take notes and keep the members informed if that is a possibility. I'm just finding a via media to keep the discussion open without accepting the formal position. Um, thank, thank you, Virat. Uh, Marilyn? Chair, I'm very disappointed to hear any conveyance that there is consensus in this room on this issue. I've written down every comment that has been made. I see no consensus. I see a number of concerns and legitimate questions. Among them are the question raised about preconditions and the very valid questions that have been raised by Virat Bataya about how it is possible to bind a group of advisors to the Secretary General of the United Nations on the planning of the program of the IGF to preconditions of this nature. This makes me very uncomfortable. I do not see a consensus. I think there are unanswered questions. I think it's premature to be taking a, a solutions approach. I think we can send questions. I don't think it's fair to say those questions are going to Brazil, however. I think those questions are going to the uh, critter that is called in, um, NMI, which is a composite critter. And so I think it's fair for some of us who have concerns to ask to have questions. I tend to agree with one that, um, you know, we are really expanding our role. Uh, I understand, again, if these meetings are open, then everyone who wants to listen in can do so. We can send questions, and then we can take the time to consider what the answers are, and we can figure out really whether this is in the interest of the IGF, that is what we are here to plan. Uh, Fiona, please. Yes, thank you, Giannis. And I, I've listened very carefully to what everyone said, and I appreciate all the concerns and the sourcing of all the concerns, especially those from national governments, and governments have taken particular positions, and it's very difficult to separate those, almost impossible in many cases, um, in, including for, for me, I, I would think. But I, I do, again, I just find it slightly a little bit ironic and bizarre and would sort of echo some of the concern Avery had made. We want to we sort of we move forward. We want to be progressive. We want to use technology. We want to plan an internet governance forum. But then we want to fall back on process when we don't want to do something. And my recollection is that over the years, the MAG chair and the special advisor, when Nitin was here, and maybe Marcus can elaborate, did a variety of activities that involved outreach and participating in events and liaisoning with different things. I remember seeing Marcus at many meetings around the world. And I don't remember ever those conversations coming to this group for con discussion and agreement. Um, Again, that being said, I, I do understand the sensitivity. I think the idea of a permanent seat or a seat is, is problematic for many people. So would, again, support the proposal you put forward in terms of a liaison to understand what the process is about, to understand if and how it would impact the IGF. Without someone there, it would be difficult to do that. So again, I'm, just a, I'm a little bit perplexed, and, and, and I too am disappointed that when we want to do something that's forward-looking, we fall back on process points. And it's, it's, it's um, maybe per perhaps appropriate given the building that we're in. Uh, thank you. Avri? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to reiterate what I said before in that I definitely think it is necessary 
for us to be in attendance. I, I truly don't care what we call the role. Um, I truly don't. I mean, call it a liaison, call it a member of council, it's, it's all a name. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think whether it's uh, the, you, yourself as, as the, 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 the chair or Chengatai as the secretariat or both of you uh, attending, I don't think that matters either. What I think is critical is that we be there and that we be participating and that somebody be there to make sure that the IGF is properly represented within NMI discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As a new MAC member, uh, I would like to say that uh, there is, I don't think there's a consensus on this matter up to now. Uh, I have followed all the conversations, opened my eyes, my ears, uh, to each comment because I want, I'm eager to learn. I, I really would like to congratulate all what ICF had done in, in the past MAC, MAC members, uh, actual past MAC members. Really, you are shifting a lot of things and rules of the game worldwide. That's why I would like to uh, propose that we, as we are the spirit is open, and until things are not clear enough, I, I don't think we should call this as a consensus. Thank you. So thank you, um, Juan Alfonso. We heard you already many times. We know thank you, you Chairman. You uh, I think that any kind of, uh, because, you know, I'm a very simple person. I really, maybe I don't understand the meaning of liaison or, or that, uh, initiative that have council or whatever. I don't care. Maybe they have a Politburo inside. Uh, uh, I, I am favorable of collaboration. And maybe there's, of course, there's two, two things here. There's a procedural part that uh, maybe I can be flexible there, as has been said, that maybe the procedural part of the way the invitation is done. But the second thing is that to collaborate it really doesn't have to be without any condition. So any kind, either a liaison or any participation, it, it, if, if it's done without taking that clause out, it's, it's a recognition of, of, that, of that clause. I, I remember the analogy that I put with the Martians or the Vatican. Uh, that will be unacceptable for many here that I, I don't think that the whole house here is Roman Catholic. And so uh, I think that we, we, I am repeating. Personally, I think that we should collaborate. That's where outreach is with all the initiative, even with this recent Ch Chinese initiative as well. With all the initiative, we should collaborate. And, but without preconditions. We don't have to, to, to part with our belief and our way of doing, and they don't have to part with them but don't, don't put conditions to any of both parts. Collaborate in good faith. Uh, I know that it's another issue, the ideological issue uh, of the, or the intention, if this takes the wing out of the IGF sales or something like that, if it's competition or not collaboration, but that will be prejudging in the advance. Let's see what happens, and it's like going to a party. If the party goes sour, then you can always Leave. Well, not in Hotel California, no, because there you can never leave. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Peter? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think, Peter Dengate Thrush, I think in general my position is that it's usually better to talk than not to talk, and it's usually better to respond to a, to a, a well intentioned invitation with a well intentioned response. Um, I, I disagree with Avery that though that the, the appearances don't matter, and, and people in the room are obviously very concerned about some of those. Um, and perhaps the way to deal with that is to, is to and, and we, we need to get across those difficulties that we do feel there's a, there's a difficulty about having to sign up to a set of principles. We do feel there's a difficulty in the legal structure of the MAG, assuming responsibility in this role. My suggestion is the way we deal with that is we send an observer to the meeting to have those sort of conversations, uh, because communication is better than not communicating. 
and as I say, responding by saying, uh, we see you set up, we see that you're dedicated to improving the conditions of the MAG, but we're not going to join for these reasons. That seems to me to be a little bit artificial. But there are sensitivities, and so we need to go, we need to explain those sensitivities. And there's also a sense that, that sending the chair is, is, conveys material, uh, you know, con conveys an impression that not everyone's happy with. Well, that's why we have a secretariat. They're our staff, they go and do these sorts of missions, uh, just as somebody pointed out Marcus used to do. So my suggestion is that we ask the Secretariat to act as, uh, as an observer uh, until such time as the MAG has resolved with NMI uh, the difficulties and the sensitivities that people have raised. Thanks. So thank you. Um, so still, I'm, I'm, uh, what I'm hearing that so, – sorry, Cheryl, excuse me. I... Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, couldn't have said it better than Peter. I agree with uh, his proposal and assessment. I think keeping the lines of communication open is really important. Uh, and I recognize that there are a lot of outstanding questions, and that's to be expected. This is something that's new. And so, of course, there are a lot of questions. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there are some sensitivities, as Peter mentioned, and so I think this would be a good compromise. Thank you. So I, th I think we're going down down the the, the line as uh, so init initially, uh, Marilyn suggested that liaison uh, function could be established to uh, to keep this these lines open and liaison has uh, one meaning than observer. Uh, observer is not engaging. Observer is sitting in the back row and taking notes. Liaison is engaging and can convey the message. Uh, and uh, the message uh, should be conveyed if the initiative goes in a totally wrong direction, uh, which uh, would not support IGF, but uh, rather uh, sort of either compete with IGF or, or go against the interest of IGF. So um, I, I still seek uh, sort of uh, your understanding that we should consider uh, sending or establishing liaison with the uh, NMI initiative. And this is what Marilyn suggested at the beginning. Marilyn? Thank you, Chair. Let me um, think openly with all of us about what we've heard. Certainly, the role of a liaison is different than the role of an observer. But during the discussion, a number of very important questions have been asked that need to be answered, regardless of whether it is an observer or a liaison. The question of a precondition that involves what may be interpreted by some as an endorsement is, is a problem, I think. And so we have questions. I would like us to pursue sending a short list of questions and start perhaps with the observer role with the idea that we can, if those questions are answered to the satisfaction of the, um, the, con the concerns that have been raised about endorsement, overextending our role, um, the legal implications, the preconditions. It is always good to engage and consult. But you don't have to go to uh, every party that your neighbor gives in order to maintain a good relationship with your neighbor. Uh, thank you. So, uh, let Fiona, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, I actually have a slightly different set of questions based, based on what I'm hearing. Um, and I understand the concerns about the precondition and what's on, on the website. But over the last couple of days, I've heard various members of, of the, the de Brazilian uh, delegation or members from Brazil talk about the Net Mundial um, output and using that and having that being a basis for certain parts of IGF. And when that was said, there was no concern about what was the output of, of Net Mundial. Mm -hmm. So there's some slight inconsistency here in terms of 
being okay with doing it as a part of the con conversation of the IGF, but not wanting it to be part of the, the conversation of Net Mundial Initiative. I, ag I agree with the condition or the question about precondition signing on, but I do sort of sense some inconsistencies in, in the conversation, and it would be helpful to understand that, especially as we look at intercessional work and going forward on some of the things that have been suggested earlier in the last couple of days. Uh, Avriya, you are asking for the floor. No. So I, I think I think I will not prolong this discussion. What what I see that uh, we are not in a uh, in a position to take decision on this question. Unfortunately, to my big regret, um, as as I always uh, uh, say, the absent is always wrong. Uh, those who are absent cannot influence anything. And uh, we will, uh, so unfortunately, we will be absent as, as a formal, as a formal uh, sort of member, neither liaison. Uh, as it comes to observers, since meeting is open, I see no reason, uh, uh, I see no reason uh, to appoint anybody as observer because everybody uh, can go and observe and make, make own, own decisions. So I will convey that to uh, uh, organizers of, uh, or promoters of uh, NMI. I will ask those questions as uh, that, that uh, transpired during our discussion here. And uh, uh, in case uh, the uh, explanations will, uh, that will be given will satisfy uh, the NAG, we may come back to this question at the later stage uh, at uh, any time. So the MAG will not be formally represented. The MAG will not formally liaise at this point in time. That said, I will ask uh, the uh, vice chairman of the MAG, the uh, member of CGI, members of CGI and, and uh, uh, Ambassador Benedicto Fonseca, make sure that no decisions in M uh, NMI are made which would go against the interests of IGF. Mm -hmm. Please. Uh, thank you, Janice. Uh, I, I did not intervene, and I think other colleagues as well, because we want to have as much feedback we, we can from the community. Uh, but one point I'd like to emphasize is that uh, uh, much of the concerns and points that have been raised have also been discussed uh, within the Brazilian Steering Committee. Uh, and uh, you may have noticed in the first day there was a statement coming from our part uh, uh, specifying what are the terms of reference that guide our participation, what is our understanding of the initiative, since the initiative itself is still being shaped. Uh, tomorrow there will be this uh, conference call. I hope that some of those concerns that, again, are uh, also in some sort ours as well can be addressed in the process of shaping the initiative and uh, certainly uh, it will be in our best interest and not only because we are hosting IGF but because we are convinced this is the right way to go to make sure that IGF uh, interest and it will not in any way be harmed. So uh, one thing that I maybe would like to propose is that in the light of the discussions we will have not only tomorrow but maybe in another format that can be agreed upon uh, that might address some of the concerns uh, if there could be some kind, let's say, we, we are, I'm concerned because we are not meeting again until next May, but if there could be any possibility to come back on this, uh, I don't know, uh, by some platform and, and res resume the, this discussion in the light of points that are being made. I think we are moving uh, very rapidly in so many areas that uh, I think maybe we have to devise some uh, innovative ways of discussing among ourselves and making some decisions, if it is possible. I, I would be uh, pained if we could lose uh, some opportunity that in the end 
we could agree that some concerns have been addressed, that some issues have been overcome, and uh, in the absence of another physical meeting, uh, that discussion could not be resumed. So this is the, the point I'd like to make, and uh, again, to emphasize that uh, we have uh, tabled, the Brazilian Steering Committee has tabled uh, 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 this statement uh, exactly to specify from its own point of view perspective what is the understanding regard to the initiative. And this demonstrates that this is something yet being constructed, and I think the input that is coming from this meeting will be very important for not only for us, but for the, 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 the organizers as well, the proposal. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, and, and of course, uh, everything that I said before uh, relates to the uh, cooperation uh, or uh, uh, being members of the uh, council. So that does not relate in any way in uh, any other forms of uh, sort of uh, cooperation uh, because we did not discuss that. Uh, I see Internet Society. Constance. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And uh, in, in response to uh, the ambassador's uh, last comment, um, I would like to, to welcome this uh, invitation to absolutely keep the channel of communications open. Um, we will meet physically uh, in, in a few months, but we will have also a series of webinars. Um, and I would suggest that um, since uh, between now and our next webinar, there will be more information, probably more clarification. Uh, maybe we address again uh, in, in only a few weeks uh, the question of how we want to articulate, uh, whether it's an observer, a liaison, something else. I think it would be uh, very timely to have this discussion soon. Uh, in, in a few weeks from now. So absolutely, I, I think we need to keep this channel of communication uh, very open. Thank you. Uh, so thank, thank you for a uh, little opening. Uh, and uh, I, I think that might be done in uh, sometime 18, 19 December or 21, 22. December, which are uh, so time when, when we uh, could have a conference call if, if conditions will be ripe, <clears throat> if clarification will be given, if our online conversation will uh, indicate that there might be some uh, change in the position of uh, uh, MAG members feeling very strongly about it. So I think that this is a conclusion of this uh, 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 point of, of the agenda and let us move very briefly to any other business general updates uh, I believe that might be of interest of uh, uh, MAG members uh, Slobodan on the any <coughs> other business thank you Anis uh, I just wanted to make a very short note from my perspective uh, of a new MAG member. Uh, Cengitai yesterday sent an email to the mailing list uh, which was packed with useful documents. And unfortunately, it ca came a bit too late for us to go through them carefully and use them in an informed debate uh, at our session these days. Uh, now, as a new MAG member, I'm learning as I'm going uh, on how the IGF event organization and uh, MAG work are structured. Um, I have participated at a, uh, at a few IGFs uh, in the past as a participant, but uh, from that perspective, it is very difficult to perceive the totality of the process and especially internal workings behind it. Um, we also went through a virtual orientation session last week, and uh, that was useful to some extent. It gave us some general guidelines on how to go about our work, but uh, that session could not prepare us uh, for the kind of topics and discussions we had on our agenda these days. Um, um, the, the website also is not uh, very uh, helpful in this regard. Some documents are easy to find, such as the terms of reference, but some are buried deep inside the site. Among such documents are, for example, outline of session formats or formats description, which I... Uh, found through search engines in order to better understand, for example, what the flash session precisely mean 
or uh, how a panel, a workshop, or, or a roundtable are defined in the IGF context. So to conclude, uh, I think it would be very useful uh, to compile a kind of a starter kit slash orientation manual slash key documents pack uh, for the future MAG members. And also useful, I think, uh, would be to uh, think of attaching links to relevant background documents right next to each uh, uh, agenda item, at least in the electronic documents, in order to have a better informed work sessions. Uh, and I think that both the incoming and the existing MAG, MAG members would benefit from such a practice. And to finish on a constructive note, uh, of course, I'm volunteering to participate in such endeavor uh, if uh, all of you and the Secretariat concurs. Thank you. So, so thank you very much, Slobodan. That, that uh, so, sounds like that the task of the person who drowns is to, to learn how to, how to swim. So I, I was trying to translate uh, one of the proverbs we have in Latvia. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the question is, we have Ten minutes, and, and uh, uh, should should we listen update by secretariat, or sh would you want me to try to summarize and repeat what the decisions were made, uh, and then the secretariat would uh, brief us uh, through uh, maybe through email or something something like that. Birat, I just wanted to inform the house that. I've, we put together the list of all the inputs that were received since last night on the themes, the sub-themes, and the um, best practice forums with the, in a compendium along with who is supported what, so that when we go for public consultation, whatever has happened in this room since last night, all the emails are now together. I just want to caution it's based on just reading of the emails, so if somebody finds that they are represented in the wrong place or not represented, they should indicate it to the secretariat so they can correct it. But for starts, we already have some 70, 80 recommendations on these three issues. Thank you. Uh, Benedicta, good luck. Uh, Sylvia, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for having the, the capability of reading the thoughts, especially mine. I was just wondering if we were having some kind of summary of the main decision. Thank you. Uh, Fiona? Yes, thank you, Yanis. Before we get to the summary, um, I just would like to sort of um, get some clarification and, uh, and reiterate the idea that whatever we do throughout this entire step of the process going into November, there's going to be some kind of mechanism for public consultation and get that as a principle agreed. Um, and I, I'd like to understand what the best mechanisms for that is going to be, is if it, assuming it's agreed. Is it going to be posting on the website? Is it going to be other things? Or are we going to discuss that at some point? But I would like to sort of reiterate as folks start these working groups and the planning for these working groups and work backwards from deadlines, the need to factor in online consultations in some fashion in the planning. I, I think until now, uh, MAG always has been working in a fairly transparent way. Uh, every transcript is pub, uh, available on website. Uh, we are asking for inputs through uh, different means. Uh, so, and certainly we, we will continue the same way. If we need specifically to do consultations on every step we do, uh, no, no problem with that. That may uh, slightly uh, limit ourselves uh, because that will take away time from, from uh, our own actions. But uh, if that's needed, I'm happy to do that. Uh, Peter, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Peter Dengate Thrush. Uh, if you're able to give us an oral summary of, of key decisions now, that would be helpful. But most of us have sat through those decisions. I'd, I personally would rather use the time to get further fresh information and have other discussions that we haven't had a chance to. And I think Fiona's raised a very interesting one, for example, uh, which has a matter of principle behind it about disclosure and public uh, input and a, a lot of practical uh, requirements as to how we implement any such uh, outcome. Um, what I would ask for, though, is within a day or so to have a written summary. I'm not sure what the MAG practice in the past has been, but at the very least a list of action items with responsibilities and deadlines in the usual way would be, to me, would be the most useful uh, output than, a, than a, discu a further discussion today. Thank you. 
So thank you, Virat. Mr. Chairman, this point that has been raised by uh, Fiona is an important one, and we should clarify that because I think there are members in this in this group who believe that public consultation has occurred, including on the issue of team, uh, since the last three months. But there are other members who believe it's not yet occurred. So if there is, if there is, if the public consultation doesn't mean putting it on the web, receiving inputs, putting it in a synthesis paper, discussing it, in the, and if it's different, and it could be, and I could be wrong, and maybe others are too, then we should clearly understand what is being recommended. The second point I would request is that please, please keep in mind, we will not have the luxury of 11 months every year. So if you want to go into this public consultation, please keep in mind the time period that it takes to put that information out, to receive the inputs, and then to start putting it together. Also, please keep in mind that we would have to make decisions based on public consultation inputs online. And we haven't done very well as a group in making decisions on several issues in the last three days, even face to face. So first, somebody, we m must reach a common a definition of public consultation. And secondly, we must wait against the time that is available, which is on an average seven to eight months and not the 11 months that we have this year. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Fiona, would you like to, to maybe uh, dwell and clarify what's your understanding uh, of the consultations? Um, sure, I'd, I'd be happy to. I think the idea that you do a consultation once and it's done is probably not a good work method. Um, I think there are certain standards and exp expectations um, for different institutions and organizations and groups like this involved in internet governance. And we require those of other institutions. And I think that the so same things we require of other groups and processes we need to figure out how to do here and to do it a bit better. So my suggestion was that if we're going to create these working groups and people are going to be leading these working groups, the first thing the working group chair people have to do is map out a work plan. And that should include a form of getting further input. So while there has been input coming into this meeting on themes, there have been additional themes that were suggested over the course of those three days. And if there's going to be a way to aggregate that or compile that and make a decision, there should be an opportunity for those not physically present or those not participating in the process to weigh in. Um, again, it's sort of a, a mapping and a planning exercise. But the idea that you get comment once and you're done getting comment doesn't seem consistent with the general sort of belief in, in the system of internet governance and the principles that guide it as I understand them. So thank you. We have uh, remaining four minutes. We need to be cognizant of the time. Virat, please, and then uh, Avery. Mr. Chairman, I want to again present that everybody who's not in the room had three months. I, the Secretary might want to clarify when was, that, when was that notice put out. I don't have the exact date, but it's at least three months old. And the inputs that have received have been online for a month and a half. So I am, and, and we've already said that the working group will do exactly the same. So here's my request, and since we're still seeing day and night and not saying, you know, it's evening and afternoon, if, if there is a different process, then please put it specifically to the working groups because we do not wish to be accused of being opaque after having gone through all this process because I firmly believe what we have in place is as, as transparent as it gets. But we are certainly open to improvements, but we should have specific recommendations on what they would like us to change. Thank you. Thank you. Avri will be last, and then I will maybe make a suggestion and still do uh, one conclusion saying goodbye to all of you. Uh, Avri, please. Thank you. Uh, I think that as a MAG, we have to be accountable to the IGF community, which means we get some input we do some work, we show our work, and we get comment on that work. So we, we came up, you know, we got some input from them, and now we talked about it for three days, we added a whole bunch more, now we go back and we say, okay, how did we do? Did we miss anything? Do we add anything? It doesn't need to be a three-month consultation. It's something that can be done in three weeks. But accountability, the MAG is something that has to be accountable, which means we have to keep going back to our community and say, did we get this right? 
And, and that's, I think, what we're saying about not just transparency, but accountability. Perhaps we need a session at the IGF to figure out what IGF accountability is, but it has to be accountable to the community. Thank you. Uh, of course we are, and, and actually since the, the, um, many of the MAG members were nominated through uh, the community consultations, uh, and Secretary General took that into account, so the, of course we are accountable at least to our own communities. So, but that, that's, that's obvious. Again, I don't think we have, uh, uh, we have in mind to work behind the closed doors. Uh, everything we do is online uh, in real time. Uh, the transcripts will be published, maybe except the joke about the State Department that I will ask to uh, take out for political reasons. No, I'm, I, again, I'm trying to joke. Uh, the, um, but my suggestion, and again, that stems from the experience I have uh, many years uh, working uh, in multilateral diplomacy, is uh, to uh, open uh, working groups to everybody who wants to follow the work and contribute to work. And then that uh, resolves uh, uh, those, those uh, questions. Of course, we need to uh, communicate as well. And uh, since I do not have time to do uh, formal closing and, and uh, list everything uh, we, we agreed upon, I will try to sum up in writing. Of course, that is very painful for me, as you know. But uh, I will try to do my best. Um, so my, my advice would be to all coordinators, uh, when you start uh, planning, uh, please put, put that every meeting, I mean every working group is open-ended and all those who are interested uh, can join at any time, contribute and so on. Of course that does not exclude putting uh, the results uh, time to time uh, for, for public observations, comments and, and um, uh, uh, getting feedback from, from the others who cannot uh, uh, participate on a daily basis. So uh, 30 seconds for I, uh, ICC and, and uh, 30 seconds for Lynn. And that will bring us to the uh, end of the meeting. So I just wanted to support the um, Secretariat and, and the MAG so far in terms of consultation process, ICC basis. Um, has a lot of experience going through consultations both with our members at a global level and at a national level and and I think that it's important that each of us around the table working on the IGF collectively representing different uh, stakeholders and communities recognize that we each have a responsibility to bring a consultative perspective and uh, and that that is an important part of the process it, it, it might not eliminate every other step where we might want to check with a wider public, at, such as posting things on the website as Chengatai does, but, uh, but I think each person who's representing a, a group should recognize that that, that consultation process is, also comes at an individual organizational level. Thank you. Lynn? Thank you, Chair. I don't, won't abuse the last few seconds by thanking you and first-time MAG member comments and all that, but will be on the mail list. I just wanted to point out that a number of us had talked and said it might be a good idea to try and get an informal dinner together for any of the MAG members that are actually still here. Um, the Internet Society very helpfully found a reservation for all of us. It is in your mail accounts. It's actually the Café de Centre in the Place de Mollard at 7, 7.15 for anybody that is um, available. As I said in my note, this would be a good opportunity for us to do some cross-community building internally to the MAG. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Let me, let me uh, close by thanking all of you uh, for engagement and, and hard work during these three days. It is uh, uh, always difficult to start the new year, but I think we have progressed uh, maybe not as far as we, I would like to, to see us progressing, but still we, we made significant progress and we will continue that. Uh, in uh, upcoming weeks uh, uh, to, uh, until we reach the point of sending out calls for proposals. I would like also to, uh, on our behalf, to thank our interpreters. Thank you very much for helping us uh, and doing <laughs> more, even more than you are uh, normally supposed to do, helping us also with the Spanish translation. Also, I would like to thank also, uh, also scribes who diligently followed our discussions and um, uh, transcribed everything we said, including jokes. Thank you very much.
So next next uh, uh, engagement might be not necessarily might be in uh, mid mid December when uh, if. Uh, any development will happen with the Net Mondial initiative. Otherwise, we will be proceeding to work we, we agreed to do, and I will communicate what, remind what those decisions were. And uh, certainly we will meet in mid-January uh, to conclude our conversation about teams and, and sub-teams, uh, the uh, work stream that will be managed by uh, Benedicto. So thank you very much, Benedicto, for helping uh, me throughout the, the process and looking forward to working and preparing the uh, IGF meeting in Brazil. Thank you very much, thank and you. safe travels back home.